Okay. If Kate responded, we didn't hear her because she's on mute. All right. Yes. We're going to uh, bring the public portion of our yeah. meeting back to order at 6.35 meeting, Larry. And I'd ask everybody to rise and please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag, flag to the flag of the United States of, of, United America, States of America, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, God, indivisible God, with, God, with God, liberty God. and justice for all. Nice little internet echo going on there. But little, little delay. All right, so under schedule business, I think... Um, I think I want to play with this agenda a little bit. Uh, do we expect the road agent to come at all? I, I know you said he's running late, so maybe we'll give him a little time before we do A. Yeah, because he thought he might be able to join via Zoom. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> we, um, we have B, which is a release of a road bond for Kinsley Drive. Do we think we need? Yeah, we need him as well. Him for that. So... Is Trish on for an yes, EOC? Trish is right. Yep. So do we want to have Trish do her thing? Yep. Maybe. All right, Trish. Sure. Perfect. You guys look great, by the way, down there. Thanks. <laughs> it, it looks really good. I don't know what you're looking at behind your back. Like, Nancy, when you look up, what are you looking at? That's We're the big screen. We're looking at you guys. Oh, nice. I should have dressed appropriately. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is our update <coughs> again. It's been a couple weeks since we've spoken. I'm not going to give you, you know, everything. I'm going to give you the down and dirty stuff that you need to know. So we always talk about numbers. Um, as of yesterday, persons with COVID in New Hampshire, um, or who had COVID, I should say, was 43,328. However, persons recovered from COVID is 85% of that, so 40,347 have recovered. Deaths attributed to COVID are 781, that's up 2%. Total COVID cases in New Hampshire are 6,200. Persons who have been hospitalized in New Hampshire with COVID is 916. However, the current hospitalizations are 319. A little breakdown um, with complete information, there's 132 individuals under the age of 18. Um, the rest are adults, 49% being female, 51% being male. The new cases that we see in Rockingham County are 198. A lot of that is attributed to what's happening right on the border. Hillsborough County, other than Nashua, is 242, Stratford is 97 cases, Merrimack 84 cases, Cheshire 41, Belknap 25, Sullivan County 24, Grafton 20, Carroll County 11, Coos County 8, and Nashua is 69, again, because they're saying it's close to the mass border. They are telling us as of yesterday, the county of residences for six new cases is still being determined. Again, there's issues sometimes where somebody is transported or there was an incorrect address written down uh, via the transport, so they're still working on that. And then a breakdown of cases in our particular school district. Um, so in Newton, we've got 18 in our school system. Kingston is 19, Fremont is 22. I shouldn't say in our school system, in Newton is 18, Kingston 19, Fremont 22. However, cases by school are zero in Bakey. We have one in Memorial, six in the middle school, seven in the high school, zero in the SIU office, and number of current quarantines to do with the school is 37. Then we've had obviously numerous calls. It's actually been pretty hectic over the holidays with us ramping up to the VAMS, which is the, the vaccine administration management system, um, working with all our first responders, both fire department and police department. Um, Larry and I have been working with them, completing registration for the vaccines, getting everyone on board. We had a few glitches. Um, but some of the questions that have come up in our legal calls, 
are a few things. So we talked about sites. We have fixed sites that are open, but there were questions about are our testing sites gonna interfere with vaccine sites? And Perry Plummer said, absolutely not. They're completely separate. So people can still go and get tested. Even you're seeing, you're seeing lines to do with vaccines. It's two separate entities. Um, right now we have 13 fixed vaccination sites. Um, and you've probably seen it on TV. I'll repeat it for those in TV land. Um, Claremont, Concord, Exeter, Hookset, Keene, Laconia, Lebanon, Littleton, Londonderry, Nashua, Plymouth, Rochester, Tamworth. First responders are, you, and you've probably seen, if, especially if you watch the governor's call today, but also on all our calls, they've been trying to decipher, so who's in the 1A um, t uh, for the vaccine? So 1A is, you've probably seen first responders, um, our long-term care facilities and the workers in those long-term care facilities. What we had, what, what happened is we had a little glitch in when people were filling out, Larry and I actually, unfortunately on Christmas day, had to send out a pre-registration to all our first responders and they had to fill it out for the vaccine. And in filling it out, if I'm gonna use an example with the fire station, if say they were a firefighter and they were also an EMT, but they happened to put down firefighter as their position, the way this pre-registration worked is you only had, you could only put in one thing. And firefighters, although they were considered a first responder, when all these pre-registrations went into the vaccine administration center, they um, filtered them, if you will, and pulled out EMTs, so EMTs actually were a step above, say, the firefighters. So we had some glitches where some of our firefighter and EMTs put in, they were firefighters, and they weren't getting responses. And when we were on our call last week, we, we discussed that, and they said, you know what, have them redo it and put themselves in as an EMT. For people in TV land that are listening, and for those of you that maybe Larry and I haven't gotten to, if you haven't heard back, they do not want you to pre-register. They want you to contact either Larry or me, and we'll take it from there and see if there was a problem with the registration. But right now in total, phase 1A includes about 110,000 individuals. Um, and again, they're filling out that pre-registration and we hope to be done by mid-January. Um, the contact for this rollout, uh, again, you know what they say about too many chiefs, it makes it confusing. They're trying to funnel it down. So each community, the contact is the EMD. So if there's questions, if you're having problems, um, it's best to contact us and we'll filter it to whatever, wherever it has to go. Um, the new EOC activities, we're dealing with calls on the testing, contract tracing, um, obviously PP inventory and equipment. We had questions on many of our calls in the last, well, two weeks since we've talked. So here's some of the questions that came up. Does the state have a recommendation when someone who has been positive, um, they've been positive, but should they be vaccinated? And how long should they wait to be vaccinated if they've tested positive? And the answer was, if they are not symptomatic, they can be vaccinated once they get through their 10-day quarantine period. Um, they should not be currently actively infected. They cannot get the vaccine if they are. Um, if you, you see on TV, um, if you go to the New Hampshire channel on the bottom during our news, they scroll the cases on the bottom of the screen. So a question was, what is the thought process in having one to four cases? And then all of a sudden it might jump, now you've got numbers, five cases, six cases, 10 cases. They said, why, why is the state doing this? It's confusing. Why say one to four? And the answer was, they have to keep a range to protect people's identities who have tested positive. So they don't wanna put one or two, they do a range. After four, um, there's so many people, you know, there's no risk of identity um, or violating anybody's identity. Um, there was another question about what is the guidance 
that the AG's office is putting out about employers requiring testing. Um, they are working on that. The AG's office says we're gonna get it out to you. They're, we get uh, daily situation reports. They're gonna add it to the situation report and then we'll share it with you guys. But it is something that they are working on. Um, one of the things that they did say is if an employer is gonna require a uh, test before somebody comes back to work after being uh, positive, then the town or the municipality is gonna have to pay for it. But they're gonna give us actual guidance on that. Primix was also on the phone for that one. Um, we have, uh, one of the questions is, we have firefighters filling out the VAMS paperwork um, and they don't know how to make an appointment since they would not be receiving a vaccine in the hospital. They reminded us, we don't want them to go to a hospital. We want them to fill out the paperwork and then this um, VAMS, which is again, the, the vaccine administration management system is the one heading this, heading the, blowing the trumpet, whatever you wanna call it, um, and they will get back to us. So they want us to just be patient. Um, they say to those first responders or anyone, if at some point we all have to register, who knows how that's gonna go. But they're reminding you, if you have more than one email, you need to remember the email that you use to register, because that's the only way they're gonna communicate with you. Um, again, they're drilling down to local EMDs to advise first responders, don't fill out more than one form. Contact us if you have a problem. Um, there was another question about when employees are registering at Catholic or Elliott um, hospitals, so their appointments are getting canceled. And the question was, why is this happening? And they said, please don't go to a hospital to make an appointment. And again, this is, they're talking about um, employees of municipalities or first responders. Um, they don't want us to go to hospitals. They want us to go through the EMD and the pre-registration process. Um, there was a question, where do highway and transfer station staff um, fall on the vaccination schedule? And they said, right now we only have phase 1A in motion and they are working on more to come and where they'll fall in on the schedule. I don't know if you watched the governor's call today. He did outline it and told us a few more, you know, what 1B is gonna be 2A, 2B and 3A. So it is rolling out. Um, we're doing, a, Nate and Hampshire's doing a really good job. Just, you gotta be patient. Um, let's see, um, also a question was, if somebody's been vaccinated and they travel outside of New England while wearing a mask, do they still need to follow the, follow the quarantine policy? Yes, they have to follow the guidelines. At all times, it's important to follow them since you may, if you've traveled and you already have gotten the first vaccine, you still, it's, it's still a risk. You still need to quarantine and follow guidelines until you have that sec second vaccine. And even then, we may still need to wear masks. They wanted us to know that the military is assisting at vaccination site in Concord. Um, they're also doing an exercise today. They're bringing in more personnel to handle um, what's coming up with vaccine matters and issues and procedures. Um, continued support on our missions dealing with COVID-19. Um, actually, Larry and I have, have a class we've got to take this week. They're changing some stuff on our Homeland Security website and how we have to fill things out. So that's part of what we call missions, which is what we have to submit daily missions. This is all changing. I don't know why they have to change this now, but who knows. Um, they're also talking about our mobile testing sites um, vaccine sites, we've got some issues with warehouse operations, um, PPE distribution. Everybody's so into what's happening about the vaccine, they're forgetting that we still need to order the PPEs, wear the PPEs, pay attention to our inventory. If departments are getting low on certain things, they need to reach out to Larry or me so that we can make sure we've got whatever you need. Don't let it fall by the wayside. Kind of don't get comfortable, if you will. Um, and then um, I think that's it. That's all I have. Cool, thank you. Thank you. The um, question for Trish and Larry, have you noticed, noticed with PPE, these surgical masks, 
I don't know if it's just the box I have, but they tend to break like at first use. The thing here, yeah. Yeah. Once in a while we get a box with, with crappy strings okay. in them. Okay. So I mean, yeah. I guess it's just just the way things are with the mass production of them. It's nothing we can send up the chain to say, you know. No, because they're coming from, and there's probably no way to trace where it came from. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, right. They're already in, in place. All right. So, um, you know, thank thank you guys again for your efforts. Now, it's it's nice to at least hear we're transitioning to more about the vaccine, you know, instead of right. the uh, reaction. But but I, I I appreciate the fact that uh, highway and transfer station is still in the conversation. Hopefully, they'll you know get kind of higher up in the on the list there. So right. Uh, any questions for Trish while we have our own? Tr Trish, did you mention because I, I, that if you miss your test, if you're in one A or two B, you can still get your test done even though you missed it yes, at a, at a yes. later date. Yep. Did you mention in that? In some cases, we have to pre-register you again. Um, but if somebody missed it and they contact you, especially being a rep, um, you can get a hold of Larry or I and we can hitch them up where they have to go. Great. And, and uh, please confirm this with uh, uh, reputable news sources, but I read today where, you know, things are happening every day, which is good, positive things. And, one of the things is they believe the Moderna vaccine might be able to cut in half, yeah. which would which would double and that's the amount of doses. To them. So right, exactly. So I mean, they're looking into it. So I, I just share that just by way of saying that um, thing, things are getting better. I th I've been yes. I've been saying that for almost a year now, but uh, every day it looks like things are getting a little bit better if we just hang in there. So. Can I add one more thing, Matt? Sure. I'm sorry. Um, one of the things, and you've probably seen it on the news, and again, because we're out in TV land, it would be good to broadcast this. Obviously, with everything, there's a lot of phishing attacks going on, so to speak. Um, do not, or for you people out there, and again, in TV land, if somebody contacts you about getting a vaccine and it's this much money and go here or send me yeah. your credit card, whatever, uh, please call the selectman, call the police, call Larry, um, your rep, somebody. It is, it, they're figuring out ways to take money from people and it's all a scam. So be really yeah. careful about those kind of communications, whether it's on an email, a telephone or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's, it's awful that we have to talk about this stuff, but it's, it is. They, they look for these opportunities. But all right, well, thank you, Trish. And thanks, thank Trish. you, Larry, for all your efforts. <clears throat> and we'll be looking forward to uh, the night we have you guys in, in a meeting and you have nothing to talk about it. <laughs> you know, so. Someday that'll happen. So. Someday. Someday. All right, so I wanted to move on down this list, but jump around a little bit because I see poor Pete um, sitting there. So we don't oh, want to keep Pete. Peter. Too. Oh, Peter. Poor Peter. But I assume he's here for the uh, probably the warrant and the trash hauling, maybe. Um, uh, the, just the warrant. No, yeah. just the warrant. You guys do the trash hauling. Okay. We don't. We don't need. Uh, no. The can I ask, in terms of the commercial trash hauling that we're going to consider tonight, um, re-upping. Uh, the other, the other thing I would 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 propose to the board is we also put out our our advertisement we put out in the past if there's other people who want to apply right mm -hmm. um, but yeah the only thing with him is I saw an ad on Facebook that he was trying to hire people I saw that and yeah. he knows he can't do that correct it's like a one-man operation yeah the um, <coughs> well, we can have several people do it but he can't build up like a team I, I don't believe that was the original concept so that, that's my question, and Lisa, as, uh, do you recall, because that was my first question, was was that in the contract? So do you remember that? In which contract? So for the commercial trash hauling contract, was there a specific clause in there that said you cannot, like, bring on employees? I think you said, like, no. one, right, one truck, one trailer, whatever it was. 
It was not employees, but it was how many vehicles could come in, I believe. So I, I can go back to the um, actual doc to check it out. It was really just the size of the truck and the number of loads that could be brought in per day. Correct. Yeah. So I guess if, and the specific days that were allowed. So I guess if he's if he's hiring because somebody to tell, drive his truck on his off day, that's fine. But it's well, as long as it's yeah. his truck, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Basically, we can't tell a uh, business who they can hire how many people they can hire or anything like that because the it's a business that is given the ability or the license to haul newton trash into the transfer station right makes sense so my only question for pete is is uh this process we've been doing it a while now any concerns the way we're doing Not it with steve he, he's a great guy okay no issues with him all right, great. So does anybody, I don't have a link here, but is there a motion that is needed for this one? Lisa, how many loads a day is he supposed to be bringing in? Okay, so let me give you the highlights. There is a limit of one class one through three pickup truck um, under 14,000 GVWR with sidewalls no higher than cab of truck and appropriate commercial liability insurance. So the, we do allow one vehicle. So if he puts somebody else in his vehicle that we have the current insurance binder on, that's not a problem. There is a maximum of 10 loads of household refuse bagged per week, which were allowed only on Tuesdays and Thursdays from time of opening till one hour prior to closing. That recently changed at the recommendation of our transfer station manager, having no objection to it being done on a weekend day as well. Okay, because he's bringing in basically four to five loads a day. I've been there and counted them. I, well, I, think, he, um, I, sh I think he should have an increase in the price that we charge. What is the current uh, price? The current permit fee is $500. We should flip it to 1000 well, we can't be doing that uh, willy-nilly. We have to, um, Pete, have you been tracking the number of loads that come in? Oh, and by the way, those are the ha household refuse. There is an exception to that, mm -hmm. by the way, Charlie. With the, with the card Recyclable card. materials, commingled glass, plastic, aluminum, cardboard, paper, scrap metal, are required to be separated from regular household trash and can be dropped off separately anytime during normal business hours including Sundays, and loads containing only recyclable materials are excluded from the 10 load limit. So, um, so you, Pete, sorry? have you been tracking yeah. the number of loads that come in and whether or not it's household trash or recyclables? The, the majority of the loads he brings in is um, recycling. I'd say the, the first two to three loads he brings in is trash, and then it's all cardboard and commingled. So you so that should give Charlie the information he was looking for. So you're you're thinking of doubling his permit fee yep. based on you should see the trucks. You should you see his truck when he brings it in. I'm telling you. It isn't a level pickup truck, it's a hump pickup truck with, with a rack on the back with big barrels on the back that are full. Right. So is, I mean, so, so the concept here is that the volume of trash is increasing. Well, it wouldn't increase because if, if we turned around and we said that he could only bring in one load, somebody else is bringing the load in because it, it, somebody else in Newton would bring in that trash. So they just wouldn't hire him and they'd put it in their own <coughs> vehicle and bring it no, in. No, Matt, but he's doing it as a profit. Right, correct. And, and the town's not receiving a profit, the town is paying. Right, so the, I guess I'm. The town is receiving a fee to cover any additional administrative costs yeah 
that are associated with that business coming in to drop off the trash. That's all we're entitled to do. We're not in the business of making money, per se. So then we shouldn't charge the that. people from out of town that, to bring stuff in. And we shouldn't charge people for TVs and everything else. Is that what you're saying? We're charging for those because it costs us to dispose of. That's why we charge. Well, the trash that he brings in, it costs us to dispose it, of it. Well, but we well. would, but that's we already would been be paid for paying by taxes. that cost regardless because they are Newton residents. The cost to dispose of the trash is covered under the taxes that every property owner in Newton pays. It's only Newton trash. So whether I bring my trash into the transfer station myself or I hire this third party to bring it to the transfer station for me, it's still going to cost the transfer station the same amount of money to dispose of my trash, not more. So if we talk about administrative fees, and, and I'm not saying that an increase would be out of line here. I'm just saying a doubling of the permit fee would mean we're essentially working twice as, twice as hard to administer this program, which I... But in the beginning, Matt, he only had a certain amount of people, and it's increasing. And in the beginning, right, but the volume hasn't we changed. only charged him $100. If you, if you increase your people, your volume increases. No, you're not. You're increasing the amount of people in town who are not coming in in their vehicles because they're going in his vehicle. The volume never changes. So the volume, if, if, he, has, if he has 10 residents, remember, it's 10 people who live in town and 10 people who pay taxes. If he has those 10 people going in his truck, it's the same as if each of them took their own vehicle in. The volume never changes except for the fact that he's making a profit off the town. Right, but that's... No, he's making a profit off of town residents. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's making a profit off the town people. Well, that was but the whole purpose of opening the business. <laughs> yeah. So, right, that's Good. exactly what it is. This, yeah. The residents do not need to pay for this service. They are opting to do this. In... It, like... Matt and Lisa said, the volume of trash does not change. It, instead of 10 cars going into the, to the transfer station, only one vehicle, which is even better because now there's less right. interaction with all these people. Right. And when you think of administrative costs, that's Mind a decrease that. in administrative costs. Right. I know at the beginning, the concern was you, you would basically have to pull somebody out of the guard shack or not, well, the shack, and they'd have to sit there with him and check every bag, and it would take a long time, but I don't think that's, that's what happens, happens, right? No. Right. So, yeah. so, you know, I don't, I don't know if you want to make a motion. However, I would for, like to see Pete um, I'm not sure she froze or she's stuck like that. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, you're stuck. <laughs> you might think we're stuck. <laughs> so did you not hear me? We did not hear you. So only tell us the good stuff. Go. <laughs> okay. I was saying I think that it would be helpful to have Pete provide the board with a report of the number of loads per week that has been brought in, how much of it was household trash, how much of it was recyclables, um, and whether or not there were any loads that were refused or anything that did not follow the policy that the town... We're losing her again, but when does this expire, this permit? It expired December 31st. So it already expired. Yep. So, um, um, so we would, I think that's a good the idea. The board is supposed to hold a lottery. Yeah, but the board is supposed to hold a lottery in December, and we did not do that. Yeah, because we, we didn't have. The there was interest, nobody that no. wanted it. Did we we had one. In, we had, did have one inquiry, and I gave him the information, and he never got back to us. Which and has been whatever it's been three years we've been yeah. doing this, 
we always put it out there for additional people who want to do it. And I think our grant, what is it, up to three people? Yep, yep. So Correct. we've up never had three. more than one. Yep. So. And the previous permit holder is always given preference. Yeah, right. So I mean, tonight we have, uh, you know, an expired permit, we should vote on whether we want to extend the permit. I think if if we want to get data to back up, if we want to increase the permit cost, I don't know if we want to hold off on that part of it. Well, I think so. you kind of need to let him know ahead of time. Well, that's what I'm saying. Any of them, it's that's not fair saying. if you yeah. don't. I also think that taking the transfer station manager's opinion into consideration, right. with, because he's the one who's there, he says he's having no problems with it, it's all going well. I think the board should issue the permit for this year. Do you want anybody want to turn that into a motion? I will move to issue a permit for commercial hauling effective January 1st through December 31st, 2021 to the Newton Household Waste or the actual business. If you can fill that in for me, Nancy or Diane. Um, and uh, second for discussion at the current rate. Yes, because the permit fee is in the policy. We would yeah, have true. to change the policy. That, right. That'd be a different. Right. All right. So I seconded. So is there further discussion? All right. I will call for a vote. We get to do it the old fashioned way. So all in favor? Aye. 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 So I think I heard four. Aye. Uh, Kate says yes. Okay. Opposed? Aye. It's nay. Yeah, I oppose. <laughs> I, you said oppose, I said aye, because okay. I oppose. <laughs> so it's four to one. So that, that passes in terms of the, the um, renewal. And I, I don't know, is it, do we still, I don't think it'd be a bad thing if Pete came back with a little data for us to see if we want to consider administrative cost changes, but. Absolutely. Yeah, is, so I still want to see a report. Be good for next year, can't be good for this year. Well, it could be. We kind of, we kind of make the rules. So if we wanted to change, we probably could, with a little notice. Yeah, but if you turned around yeah. and already signed the contract, that you had a previous contract, how can you change it? It's not a contract. Name? We don't have a contract. Oh, you don't have a contract. No, no. it's just it's issuing a permit essentially. Right. It's just issuing a permit. And asking for the money. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, so I think that's good. Sorry, uh, Pete, to uh, put you on the spot when you thought you were here for something else, but. So, um, by the way, the time spent to produce that report, which I'd like to see quarterly if the board agrees, should be included in the um, estimated costs to the transfer station for administering this policy. Yeah, that would make sense, so. Um, all right, do we wanna, I'm jumping all around here, but do we wanna dive into Warren articles now, or do we want to, I yeah. think that what Mike's yeah. here for could be quick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's usually a, when I laugh. That's, mm -hmm. Sleeping already. All right, I think, no, I think he's good. He's got another 10 minutes before <laughs> bed. Um, so I just wanted to hit upon snow removal, and we can kind of cut to the chase here, but, uh, we currently do not have somebody to do that sort of snow removal of, of the paths, the walkways, the salting and all that stuff at the town hall, at the police station, at the fire station, right? Those are the three the places. Library. No. The well, library. The, the library does have the, the person to shovel, but they don't have anybody to clear out like uh, in the, you know, the front there with uh, 108 where the patrons go up and anybody to sand. Yeah, so, and, and I think what what's happened in the past is I think the two chiefs had, <coughs> either they did it or somebody would kind of do their own thing as needed. And I believe what we're doing here was a previous highway person was doing it here. And I think, just verify this for me, our current custodian does not have an interest in, in this role, right? No, it's not part of his job for five years yeah. now. Okay, so the, the question in the air tonight is what should we do? So, 
you yeah, throw, you throwing that back at me? Yeah, now? you're there. Yeah. Well, I think Diane did a proposal for a maintenance company, so. So I, and I had sticker shock when I saw that. But I, I got the proposals here. Yeah. So. Huh? I have the proposals yes. here. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't know that. No. So let me give you the cliff note version while I'm here. You guys requested me to come here right, after right. you received these proposals. Right. I had no dog in this fight at all. Right, right. So a couple things. I looked at the proposals, and we'll talk about them in a minute. But I want to go back to the concept. I always was under the belief the two buildings that were deficient was Town Hall and the library. Right. I don't see, and somebody in this room can tell me, or one of the chiefs can tell me, where the fire department's an issue or the police department's an issue. The fire department has duty guys on during the day, and the police department is more than capable of shoveling walkways and doorways. Yep. So I don't see why those are even in this equation to start with. Me too. Is, is anybody on a different page than I'm on? I tend to agree with you. I would just have to verify with them. but. Oh. I spoke with uh, Chief Jewett, and the duty officers do not feel that that is their job. Therefore, he is the one doing it. And well, I I, first of all, I don't think the chiefs, and I'll use that cumulatively, mm -hmm. should be responsible for that job. They wear gold, they wear trumpets. The under people, I'm sure, if directed, can do that work. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident of that. I know the pecking order of military organizations jump and my All understanding is, is the duty officers part of the what made them duty officers and that kept them busy during the day when there were no calls is that they would be doing um, essentially like janitorial type custodial type duties such as sweeping mopping filing or whatever else needed to be done i would think shoveling would fall into that category as well yeah it's good cardio exercise on top of that. So if we put that aside for a minute, those two buildings. Three. Three? That's three out of the five that are on the proposal. You got the old fire station. Yeah. Well, we don't station own Station two. Junction but, fire station, yeah. Okay. Oh, the junction, the junction okay, fire station. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah not the yeah, old one yeah, on right, Main right, Street. The junction right. fire station, new fire station at 8 Merrimack Road and PD at 8 Merrimack Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, and this is just a suggestion, again, you guys asked me to come here to look at this. Mm -hmm. I would take those three right off the table, mm -hmm. like right off the bat. But Mike, shouldn't we put the transfer station on the table? Because there's, everybody down there is over 75. Oh, then no. And they have yeah, to no, shovel no. around all them containers down they there shouldn't, and They shouldn't, no, no. They shouldn't be on the table. They, well. To me, personally, this is Pete, getting crazy. Pete, are getting you 75? Crazy. This is getting crazy. He's the only one. Oh, okay. All right. This is beyond this crazy. This is getting crazy. So it's really just the two we need to talk about, I think. In my yeah. belief, yeah. yeah. You get yeah. Town Hall and the library. These are the only two that have an issue. Now, to go back in time, way, way back in time, the highway, two highway guys, one full-time, one part-time guy, way back when, they used to maintain it. The issue is, before I became road agent, those guys weren't in plow trucks. Mm -hmm. They never ran a plow truck, which is crazy in itself, on a highway department. Mm -hmm. Hence the word highway department. <laughs> we take care of highways first. So everybody that works on the highway department is in a plow truck during a storm. Hence, they can't go shovel walkways and sidewalks and anything else. Um, Secondly, and this goes back to the whole concept of this, that falls under a custodian job description. Mm -hmm. It does everywhere, schools, anywhere else. The custodian does that work. I understand, and we've had this discussion, that Tony chooses not to do that work. That's his choice. He's entitled to his choice. My belief is if you can't do that work, that's part of the description of a custodian, then you need to hire a different custodian that can do that work. Be no different than me. If I can't run a plow truck, I can't do my job. So I'm standing here telling you my belief is if you can't do your job and that's part of the job description, you need to get somebody else that can do the job. And these quotes aren't even needed. Correct. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. But he was hired not for that 
when we hired him, it was no no shoveling so, in that. So can I, um, can I, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with anything that's said, but I don't want to talk about specific employees. Okay, and that's fine. Yeah. I'm giving you a call. I didn't yeah. use any names. I'm right, about, understood, but I'm talking about we're a position. Kind of job descriptions. We're kind of, we're kind of going that way. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said that, so. Well, you kind of got to. <laughs> it's a custodian. It's my belief it's a custodian well. issue. Uh, maybe it wasn't described in the original hiring of the job. I don't know why and I don't know how we got there, but I would think it would fall under the custodian's job description. Yeah, I mean, I would, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I would kind of say the same thing and not to go down this rabbit hole, but with the transfer station, I believe the job descriptions include snow removal at the transfer station, right? So it's the shoveling, the whatever. First so, time with that. Um, so the... So Matt, I would just like to say when Tony, well, when the custodian was first hired, mm -hmm. he did shovel. And then our cleaning service was let go and the board voted at that time to let him be the maintenance man as well as the cleaning person mm -hmm. and to do away with the shoveling because he only worked 15 to 20 hours a week. So he does all the recreation areas, he does the recycling at the different buildings he's taken on and he's been shoveling to help us out but it comes to a point where that's not part of his job and he shouldn't be forced to do that. Yeah, so I, I think what Nancy's saying, and, and I see you there, Mike, um, the job description was changed yes. by a vote of the board. Right. At, you know, that could have been four years ago, yeah. three years or whatever yeah. it was. So, but I, I hear what you're saying. You were gonna say something else? So, Nancy, was it an issue of hours it was an issue of him just doing the custodial work and then he took on the cleaning service doing all the town buildings and and it just added more to his time and the amount of hours that he was allotted and that's where i'm going with this it seems hours. like round around the barn right when you get down to it it's the amount of hours that he needs to dedicate right. to do the job description right then that simplifies this quote too I mean, if you if you look at the, can we talk numbers? Is that permissible? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That's public. I yeah, mean, even yeah, though, yeah. yeah. All right. So first, I I wouldn't even entertain the the quote sixty two, which is the one that breaks it down by storms, <laughs> zero know. to six, six to nine, nine to twelve. Um, did you guys run any of the numbers on this? I did. Did you? Yeah. Oh yeah. What did you come yeah, up? Yeah, I with? did too. Well, I, I you did. ran the numbers. Yes. Okay. It, depending on the, st the storms that you have uh -huh. would, would make the difference. This, that could be up in the thousands. Oh, because be basically. I mean, I, I don't know how much you guys are familiar with this. I'm pretty familiar with it. On an average year, you have 10 to 12 plowable storms. On top of that, there you, you have go. another 10 to 12, not considered plowable, nuisance storms are what we refer to them as. So they're four inches or less, right? Right now. Like now, this is a nuisance storm. We're not going to have any accumulation, but we're out treating roads right now. So if you use that average over the course of the year, that number that is broken down by storms would run $24,000 for the year. You can hire another guy for that kind of money. Mm -hmm. So you don't even want to entertain that one. The one that would make sense is the lump sum for the course of the year. But I don't completely understand it. But the lot, bottom line where it says less than two inches, then a representative of the town needs to contact him. Is that clarified that that's in the lump sum number? Or is that a gray area? So if it's less than two inches, there's more compensation financially to that quote. I don't know. You don't know? No. Nope. And I don't know either. That's why I'm asking the question. It kind of reads a little vague. Mm -hmm. Did you guys get that out of that too? Yeah, I didn't yes. read that clause in there. But and Lisa, but, did you? Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. Okay. That's, so, so, but that's eighty-five hundred dollars for the year. That's a much better deal as a fixed number. Right. Um, you're late in the season. You're not going to find somebody to take care of this this issue. You know, this really should have been addressed back in September of October. So we're late into it. My suggestion would be to go back to this property management company, 
take three buildings out of it, have them requote it, see what that number comes up, and maybe bring them on board then. Yeah, because I, I agree with you. Kind of late in the season to find somebody. I mean, there's a chance, right? We could we could post and see what happens. But um, in the meantime, what are you going to do? Exactly. Um, and then the other thing I'm too is sure. if you <laughs> if you affinitize this over the season, is anybody going to be looking for that type of work? Because are you it's, talking just the snow stuff? Yeah, yeah. That's why I've got to go back to what I said before. I think you've got to look at the job description as the town custodian yeah. and reevaluate the scope of the, that job. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of for another. Um, this discussion for a different day, but I think that's what you're going to need to look at as the yeah. board. But Mike, aren't you looking to fill the part-time position on your department? I am, but there's no way that guy's coming to run a shovel. I can stand here and tell you that right now. I need highway guys. Right. I need guys that can run trucks, run plows, shovel. That, that's old school. You're going back to the old school where the highway guys didn't run equipment on storms. They didn't. No, they I didn't have any. They, they didn't have any. Well, okay. They still the town didn't have, have any. They still don't have any equipment. I, th I, think, I think the way it has worked with you, correct me if I'm wrong, is you're always there. Your guys are always there to help us if we need it, but you don't want us to plan on that. That's that absolutely correct. Listen, yeah. you, you, if yeah. you get a custodian yeah. and he gets storms that are six inches or less, yeah. I'm sure he can handle that. If he gets two feet dumped on him in the course of a storm, yeah. we'll come over and help out. But it's the old adage, three people feed the dog. You know what happens to the dog? It starves to death. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So. And that's the same thing that'll happen here. Somebody has to be dedicated to doing this building in town hall. Because so, even if you only get a half an inch and it ices up, somebody has to be working on that. That's actually more deadly that's right. than six inches of snow. Right. Yeah. So what's the board think about doing what Mike just outlined there is we asked to recalculate based on two buildings library and town hall. In the meantime, um, we have a conversation, and Diane, I'll do this. We have a conversation with the chiefs to make sure they understand what the, uh, I always have to check my text too, just to see if the chiefs are yeah, texting Yeah, Mr. Chairman, me Chief Alcadino is trying to talk to you. Oh, okay, good. I don't know He's where he is. muted. Can Kate say something quickly? Is there no chance we can at least make a go of getting another estimate? Because if you look at the other end, let's just say we get one storm. Could happen, probably not. Just a, it wouldn't hurt to try to get another estimate. And does anyone recall what we paid last snow season? I can't find that information at the moment. Well, I don't, I don't think we would have that. I think right? all the employees are shoveling. That's and what it. I'm so then it's too old to be shoveling. Last, last snow season, I believe it was a, you know, a free for all, whoever could a help. Free for all, right? okay, so yeah. we have it in the yeah. budget. How much do we have in the budget for this? No, we don't have it in the budget. It was just uh, employee hours were oh, if, I mean, so um, it wasn't additional hours for shoveling. It was- Oh, I meant it, this new contract. Right, no, we, we would never, never, never have a contract. We've never had a contract. Yeah, we've never had. Is Chief okay. Elcadino on the line? Yes, he's trying to figure out how to speak. Diane, can you tell him how to unmute himself? He just has to unmute himself. How? He needs to know how. In the window. I think it's no, star 10. No, he's on the 10. telephone. Isn't oh. it star 10? Nine. Star, nine. Nine. star nine. Star nine. Star nine. Oh. Star nine. Try star nine, Chief. Okay, his hand is raised. Yeah, there he is up on the phone. I thought it was star six. Not working, muted, he said. Maybe saying. it was six. Did you say six? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, now we can. You're on mute. Okay, I've hit, I've hit star six about a thousand times. Good evening. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I'm just gonna throw my two cents into this. One, NFPA, duties of a firefighter, doesn't include snow shoveling either, but we've been doing it because that's part of our duties being at the fire station. Okay, I put the full fire departments in for that proposal because I thought that's what the board wanted for all town buildings. As far as I'm concerned, remove the fire station from the quote. We've been shoveling and plowing both fire stations, shoveling with a prior administration, shoveling since I've taken over chief, 
and when we purchased the new pickup truck, I've personally been plowing both fire stations in conjunction <laughs> with the road agent's crew. So please eliminate the fire station from that proposal. We'll put our own rock salt down. We'll put our own blades to the ground and clean the fire station. But I, I understand this job description thing and I caught a tail end of one of the conversations. Nowhere in, when I was hired did it say that as a fire chief, I was gonna be behind the plow truck or behind the shovel. As a town employee in good faith, that is my job. I don't need to be told to do that. Right. So Understood. I just want to clear that half up. Thank Understood. You. That's kind of where I thought you guys were. Um, and then we can speak to Chief Jewett offline. I, I would imagine he's got a similar approach. Um, you know, I, ideally, just to kind of circle back, I think we should recalculate based on two buildings. I, I don't think it would hurt to put a post there to see if somebody wants, you know, the employment. Um, what, what do people think about that? I don't think we're gonna have much luck, but we could try it. Agreed. Yeah, I don't think? think we're gonna have much luck either. I know we put some fillers out there um, at the start of the season and nobody responded. So uh, anybody wanna make a, well, I guess we don't wanna do a motion until we have a hard uh, quote. Is everybody okay if we ask Diane to go get a new, a newly calculated quote and we look at it the next time? Yep. So what do we do in the meantime? So in the meantime, I guess we're going to have to uh, keep our fingers crossed, but in the, in the meantime, I guess it's all hands on deck, so. It's not in my job description. Yeah, I know it's not. I've done yeah. it. Yeah. I've moved to a 55 in older community, so I yeah. didn't have to shovel. Yeah, so, so I'm not the only board member nope, here. What's, what's everybody else thinking? I think it should I mean, be the town employees that we have. What? Well, I, I know it's not in my job description either, but when I'm there in, on election days and it's snowing, I'm out there removing snow as well. So it's all hands on deck. Whoever can, does. I think we need an estimate for town hall and the library, personally. Oh, I agree. I'm just okay. saying, in the not meantime, if we have a... About, that's asking a lot of people. You're more likely to spend more medical expenses from them doing yeah, that in some it's cases. It's a workers' comp issue. It's, I don't now. think that's appropriate. It is, it is, but I mean, the fact of the matter is it could snow tomorrow. Mike, is it going to snow tomorrow? No, okay. you're okay for about eight days. Okay, so we need to figure this out. Yeah, you soon. got seven days yeah. to make it happen. Quick. So, yeah. so I would say if the board's up to it, uh, we get these quotes together, maybe we can all get together, vote on them, and make it happen before kind of out of cycle of our next meeting. I don't know, is the board okay Yeah, with I also think the quote can't be for the full year. It only can be for the um, January to April season. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know if that, I don't know if it even has a calendar date in those proposals. I don't think it did. No, it but you're, did not. You're, Lisa, you're right. It only needs to be the first half of this season. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't doing a contract. We were just trying to get somebody for now. Yeah, exactly. That's all we're looking for right now, and, and who knows what we decide, but maybe, maybe we continue. If we do continue with this, it's a full yeah. season. Yeah. So. Sound good to everybody? <coughs> yep. Yep. All right, well, we thank you for your input on that. It's my fault, by the way. I was the one who had the bright idea to bring you in, so. How's that working out for you? Uh, good so far. Yeah. No, the, the thing about it is, we would have had a lot of these questions anyway. You would have been at home watching this on TV, because I know you watch it when you. They would have been texting. And you would have been texting <laughs> me saying, are you crazy? <laughs> so while you're here, Mr. Road Agent, um, can we talk about Kinsley Drive Road Bond? We can talk about it. Let's do it. It won't go anywhere, but we can talk about it. So, so basically, the um, owner, the not the owner, but the person who put up the company that put up the road bond maintenance, is asking to have his money returned to him. 
Um, and I know Mike hasn't been able to get out there. So my thought process was if we could have a motion to approve the release of the road maintenance bond upon a in final inspection of the road agent. Then I don't have to bring this back to the board. If that's okay with you. No, I'm fine with that, yeah. What's everybody think? That's fine. The amount of money is well over 25000 that he has in a road bond. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine and, why he And what, what is the holdup, Diane? What is the holdup? Is that what? Yeah. I couldn't right. hear it. Uh, I, I, I see that you have approved it, but you there's something about um, some department needs to do a markup or something before it can be released. Is that the case? Is that directed towards me, Lisa? Uh, you or Diane. <laughs> so, okay. I think she's asking what's the holdup? Yeah, I, I, on my end, the only holdup is we did the approval. The engineer and I did the approval. And then after the approval and the road is accepted, there's a... Uh, maintenance bond? Yeah, there's a maintenance bond. And that's what's being held right now, the maintenance bond. The problem is I only get the notification about eight days ago. Um, doing an inspection on a road in the winter with the snow on it, it's a little tough. Yep. So, I, I mean, if, if the weather cooperates and I have the time, I'll do it, but it's not the best time of the year to do a release of a maintenance bond where I can't inspect what I need to inspect. And I'm not in favor of releasing a bond unless the road agent feels that it is safe to do so. Yeah, and that's the only holdup. Really, the only holdup is weather for the visual inspection. That's all. So can we do the motion like Diane said? Once the mic gives us the okay, we can just go ahead and release it. We don't have to have another meeting to come back. Well, it's interesting because I don't think we've ever done that before, but that kind of makes sense to me to do that. You know, it's the requirement would be for you in writing somehow, cocktail napkin or whatever to <laughs> so you to gonna, approve. You're going to make so. Mike liable for the road then? No, <laughs> the town still the town it's just it's just there needs to be a, a piece to this before the motion actually kicks in so you have to you he's got to inspect the the, the road anyway right? right whether it's today or and six then he comes to now. us and we we okay his inspection and then the liability in my opinion is off of him it's on us yeah but that's what the motion would be if he's met all the criteria he's entitled to his money back and that's all we're saying. We're going to wait for Mike to tell us it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're not doing anything until Mike tells us right. it's okay. Mike's the boss. We're just, what they're saying is if, if Mike could do it three days from now and he has time, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And that way we can the, just be done. Yeah. the instructions are set for, for Kim. Is it Kim or Lynn? Uh, Lynn. Lynn. Lynn to release it. Um, so, I don't know. What's everybody else think? How about I make a motion and we see where it goes? I love that. All right. I move to release the road bond for Kinsley Drive uh, in the amount of $25,686 plus any interest that has accumulated upon notification of the road agent that the road passes inspection. Can I second with a friendly amendment of written notification? Email. Okay, with, well, it's an yeah, email. Yeah, which would be written. written. All right, any further discussion? Is it a road bond, Mike, or maintenance bond? The rate, maintenance, maintenance bond. Maintenance bond, Lisa. You good with that? I'll put it in. Isn't that what I said? No, yep. road bond. Good road. Road. <laughs> oh, road bond, maintenance. It's a, it says maintenance road bond. That's oh. the name of the account. Okay. All right, so any discussion? Uh, call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. No. Hold on. Did we get Kate? Yeah, I'm an I. You're an I, so we had four I's and you're an A, Charlie. Yep. Okay, so it's four to one. So, Mike, if you could just provide that once you've had a chance. I just can't tell you the time frame. Yeah. You'll, you'll see it when I can <clears throat> right. get it done visually in time and weather. 
That's fair. All right, excellent. Thank you for coming in tonight. You have nothing else, right? I don't have anything, no. Um, actually, we, uh -oh. I might want his uh, opinion on uh, one of the Warren articles, if you don't mind sticking around, Mike. All right, so let me do this. I'm gonna jump down there because I know Pete's here for that too. Yeah. My intention tonight, and the board can tell me if I'm crazy, is not to read each Warren article like we would at a hearing. Uh, we've all had these Warren articles to read already. So what I wanted to do was just quickly touch upon any that we have questions about because so everybody knows in TV land, as Trish said, what we're doing tonight is we're just kind of reviewing these before they go to review by the voters. We just want to make sure there isn't any homework to do on these before that happens because in years past, we've kind of had kind of half drafted things that go before these hearings and I didn't want that to happen. Um, <clears throat> so really quick, hopefully, I just wanted to touch upon, so, so one and two are pretty standard, so I don't think we even need to do that. Uh, the three is the, the 10,200 of um, collecting of rent, right, that we do every year. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any issue with that. People speak up, if not. Uh, number four is, is the veterans tax credit. It's under RSA 7228, we're eligible <coughs> to offer $750 per year. The, so that's the ceiling we can offer the veterans for the tax credit. We currently offer 500. So we've had a, a, a resident encourage us to, to increase from the 500. So basically the question is, do we wanna go all the way to the ceiling and go to 750 before the voters, or do we want to um, come, where, come somewhere in between because unless- Or do we wanna do it at all? Or do we wanna do it at all? Because unless our friends in Concord increase that 750, say in two or three years, then we'd be maxing out on what we could offer the veterans. So any thoughts on this one? I would just like to say if the board, whichever way you choose to go, I could then let the resident know that they could do a petition or an article if they want to do it that way instead. Nancy, do you know the last time we increased the veterans credit? Um, off the top of my head, I do not. I know I, it wasn't I, that I long don't, ago. It's been a I while. Don't, I don't believe we ever increased it. I believe we added it per the RSA when the RSA was passed like three years ago. I think um, so. years ago it used to be 250. Oh really, okay. It started out at 50 years ago and then it went to 250 and it went up to 500, yeah. I believe. It's so I mean, while. the... Um, so how much would this be total? Um, Andrew and I calculated it out last week and it was about 46 to 48,000. It depends because you have people coming and going for whatever, if they move or pass away or whatever. Now, is that the total tax credit or the difference in tax credit if with the increase? That's the difference. All right, which means that additional $48,000 right. would be actually paid by the remaining taxpayers because mm. we would still need to collect our taxes. Tell got to pay it. Yep. <laughs> so um, we don't have to vote or anything, but let me just pull the board. Are, are people interested in increasing this tax credit? Or offer, I should say, offering it to the voters to increase? Yes. Okay, everybody? I have no problem offering it to the voters. Okay, everybody's pretty much on that page. So the question is, we don't, we don't have the ability to give the voters a multiple choice. We have to give them one, one choice. So are people thinking they wanna go all the way to the ceiling of this statute, or do they want to have somewhere in between? But Matt, should, should the, where it says at the bottom, this would not result in an increase in the amount of taxes raised. 
if you're going to increase it forty six thousand dollars you're going to increase in the taxes correct yeah how does that work nancy uh, uh, actually no that just hasn't been because you're not raising and appropriating right. all you're doing is you're distributing that so it affects the tax rate only in the right so the burden the burden is distributed to people who don't get it the comes, tax credit. It comes yeah. directly off their tax bill. Yeah. Yeah. Diane, getting it. Diane, I just got a text. Could the articles put up on the screen so that people could see them? That's no. great idea. No. Can you we, can, can, we, can. I can. I thought oh, you don't you want can? to. Oh. Lisa, oh. you or yeah, or somebody well, else could share them. I've got my notes in here, though. Yeah. I don't know if you want the notes out there. Well, I don't. I don't think it's too bad. Okay. It's, all right. I mean, it's it's essentially what we're talking about. Okay. That's so fine. if somebody can share their screen in Zoom, then that'll help. But it would make it a lot easier down the road too for the public if they wanted to see what was going on. Yep. Right. You know, it might be something that we should plan on doing. Yeah. Wonderful idea. At least I'm nice with my comments. Yeah, exactly. Yes, you are. <laughs> so, Thank you. So what are what are people and obviously Charlie that language you know it's we kind of go this way with a lot of these Warren articles every year the language is really about raising appropriation it's not necessarily a free ticket right so uh, oh yeah the voters will make their mind up yeah but so, so I'd actually like to see us um, offer 600 instead of the 750 just because you can go up to that amount doesn't mean you have to go to that amount. All at once. Um, what's everybody else thinking? That's fine. Kate, what do you think? Uh, I think this is one of the hardest years we've had for most people. And I mean, it's $250, that's my thought. Well, and the veterans, uh, They've served pretty well, so I would be in favor of the full amount, but that's just what I think. Yeah. So what was her answer? So, <laughs> so I'm in favor of 750. Okay. It is a very hard year financially for everyone. They're veterans who serve to usually get a bum rap, and I think it's the least we can do personally, but it's up to the voter anyway. Yeah, and I, th I think I speak for the board when we all admire what the veterans did for us and that they get this tax credit. It's just. I think the discussion is around, do we want to push too far all at once? Um, oh, just so it gets passed, that's the thought. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of feel like the voters, we all in this town, really appreciate our vets. Probably and would, do. Yeah. Would probably uh, have it passed, just my thought, but you know. I don't know, I remember one um, tax credit warrant article a few years back that the voters actually reduced to one dollar. <laughs> Four vets? Yeah, no, no, I don't remember that tax one. Credit. I don't remember no. which one. I just remember that it was a tax credit that um, we had an RSA that allowed us to offer. The uh, article was there, and during deliberative, they that reduced it to $1. Solar. That was the, for the solar, solar panels. Those solar panels, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I'm hearing Kate's at $750. i am hearing Lisa at $600. i am at $750. You're at $750. Let's go with $750. You're $750. I was okay. going to be $600, so why don't we leave it at $750? Okay. Sound good? Workable? Yep. Work, yep. Works for okay. me. Okay. And I'm then, in off. the end, <laughs> the voters decide, right? So. Yep. Um, okay, so moving down to five, this is the one about the hazardous waste day. Um, you know, I think the important thing here, and it comes up as we go along here, is we have the, uh, what's it called, the special revenue fund yep. for the transfer station recycling, which the current balance is at $203,000. That's now, as of November now. As of November, so it could be. Two thousand two hundred and eight thousand now. If it's in a bank making all that interest, it could be fifteen dollars more. Two hundred and eight. Eight. Um, okay. So two hundred and eight, and and Pete, we uh, we don't really, we're not as in a great of a position now to increase that, right? Because of the, you know, the the sort of lessening of the value paying, of recycling I think, for a lot of recycling stuff now, right? Yeah. 
So whereas we're going kind of gangbusters there for a while, uh, it's not like that anymore. So my only concern with these next three, I think it is, Warren articles is we need to keep that in the back of our minds that we're, we're pulling from an account that really does not have a clear means of Ow. increasing. So the hazardous waste day, though, we do it every other year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see nothing wrong with that article. I, it's a common every other year. It is something that benefits the whole town. And people look for this, you know, they mark their calendars, so to speak. So as far as the hazardous waste day, does anybody have any heartburn with leaving this one as is in there? Nope. The only thing I would like to do is make a recommendation that we don't take tractor trailer truck tires on hazardous waste day. That's not part of hazardous. We, we don't take tires for hazardous waste day. Can you speak that's into only, the microphone so it's yeah, only chemicals. Um, oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry, Pete. Yeah, that I'm sorry. Would be the yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, you're right. Cool. So, and then six, continuing along here, is uh, ten thousand dollars for tractor repairs that you'd want to take out of there. So has any thought been given to putting this as a line item in your budget? Uh, yeah, not really. Uh, uh, the way I think of it is I, I try any monies that I need for the transfer station, I try not to have any tax impact. And that's why I would pull out of that fund. If we were to change number six, I need I need 5,000 to fill the tires on that tractor so I can do more work with that push the metal pile. The, the maintenance stuff of that, the other half of that 10,000, I can do myself, I mean, I'm not mechanically inclined that way, but we could probably find somebody a lot cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the new tractor that we just bought, is that correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, so when I saw 10000 for repairing a new tractor, I was a little concerned. Yeah, no, it, it's still operational. Um, I, I just, I have a leak in the tire, and uh, I'd rather not have to pay money every time I get a leak. Or wait two or three weeks to get it fixed. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm still waiting. So I just, you know, speaking for kind of the public opinion part of this, is you're going to have some people that, as Lisa's reaction, <laughs> Uh, they're going to say, didn't we just buy them a brand new tractor? Which it wasn't brand new, right? It was, yeah. uh, had a few miles on it. So that's why the only thing is I would be in favor of putting this as a line item because you have to maintain a vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I believe there is a line item for equipment repair, yeah. uh, but it's not nearly that amount. Yeah, I, I agree with Matt that this is something that needs to be in the transfer station budget because it's not a one-time thing you're going to do. Right. You're going to have to maintain this tractor every year. And, and um, you know, I'm sure there's, you know, a different, rather than equipment and repairs, I think it's probably something else, but Kim could tell you what mm -hmm. what they call it. But what do you, what's everybody else thinking hey, about this? What's the other 5000 for? Um, some of the seals and the cylinders are leaking, um, and I, I have no idea how to tackle that problem, and I know it's expensive, so that was the other half of that. I wouldn't have a problem with that 5000 be put in your line item, but the other 5000 that's a one-time deal. Mm -hmm. you, you fill them tires with the foam, and now you don't <laughs> blow out any more tires down there, moving the metal pile. Yeah. Until so, that tire is damaged and we get another tire and then we have to fill that one. It's still maintenance. Maintenance and repair, just like the fire station apparatus. Maintenance and repairs. If they have to replace tires, if they have to replace batteries, it's all maintenance. This 10,000 <coughs> is maintenance. Once you turn around and put the foam in the tires, you aren't going to have to maintain the tires again mm -hmm. until you replace the tires. The foam stops it. Peak turns around and goes into the metal pile. He hits something on the valve stem. The tire goes flat. Right. So and we're increasing the times. transfer station budget line item to ten thousand for 2021. And then if it's not needed for 2022, yeah, but if he, if he turns around it and can take, be decreased. The proposed budget for the following year can be decreased if he doesn't need it. So I, I think for me, what it comes down to is what is your 
uh, thoughts of how successful this would be as a Warren article, whether it's 10,000, 5,000, or you know, one dollar, are people going to? Generally, yeah, they'll, they usually go for, they, they look for the no tax impact and, and they're happy with that. That's right. Most of the time. Yeah. So, Diane. So if it fails, what's your backup plan? Uh, the money would have to come out of my budget. Just, just no means the, no. Tires. Yeah, no, no wouldn't mean no because this is, it's, it's, um, it, it would have to be, what I'm saying is, it would have to be ambiguous enough so that you don't get locked into not doing something specific, you know. So I think in the past, like the police chief has put in, you know, to feed an account, but not to do the work, you know what I mean? So if, if you're taking 5,000 out and trying to put it into your um, you know equipment fund and the voters tell you no you just don't have that five grand in there you can still do maintenance you just don't have five grand mm -hmm. but you, you see where I'm saying that right so yeah. we just want to make sure all those considerations are made so you don't get locked out totally so I don't know what's everybody think <coughs> I think another thought is if you put it in the budget and the budget doesn't pass, you don't have that money in there because it's well, not going to be. Well, that's always a risk, right, yeah. Right, yep. I think with the Warren article, it's more apt to get approved. Because if you put it in the budget, the budget gets shot down, you don't get it. Mm -hmm. But if you put it in the budget, too, we're paying taxes for that money, whereas this account is free money, if you want to call it that, because it's already our money to spend. Nancy, I don't like taking any money out of that account. Well, that's I, what it's and I have it. no problem with this. But that's what it's there for, Charlie. That's why uh, we did this. Well, what so are you going to do when you gotta, when you got to turn around and uh, reclaim that? Reclaim what? The transfer station when you have to dig it up and uh, replace oh, that's, it. Th that's not now, I'm not even going there. <laughs> you better look to the future, <laughs> because it's coming. Well, it is what it is. So let me kind of pull the board again on this one. Um, what are we thinking? We, we have a couple of choices here. We could tell Pete to leave it as is. We could tell Pete to go down 5,000. We could tell Pete to get rid of it. So um, Lisa, what are you thinking? I would say go down 5,000. Okay, how about I, 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 I will go for the one-time expense that <coughs> Charlie argued, but the other 5,000 is definite maintenance, and I feel it needs to be in, in the budget. So, Kate, what are you thinking? I was thinking similar to Lisa to bring it down to 5,000. I think that will have the best chance of passing, too. Okay, Larry, what are you thinking? That's fine, we can bring it down to 5,000. All right, I just soon leave it the way it is. Okay, so um, I think it's me as to get rid of it. So I think what the direction, and it's gotta be voted on and everything, but the direction I think the board just gave you is come down 5,000, take that 5,000, put it into your, your proposed budget, so. I think that's what the majority is recommending. Cool, and I think you have one more is about the potholes. Yes. Oh, but Matt, what was your opinion? Uh, Mine no. was gonna be to strike the whole article. So. <laughs> ah, that was my other option. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so um, strike it and put it in the budget. But, right. Um, so seven is for the potholes and it'd be coming out of the same account. So 5,000 for potholes. That's the one I wanted uh, input from our uh, road, road agent, agent. on. <laughs> <laughs> is he still here? He's still here, yeah. He's, he's doing his, his slow walk up to the, the podium that he does. So what is, what is this warrant article? So it's to see if the town will vote as proposed by the Board of Selectmen to raise and appropriate the sum of 5000 for the purpose of filling in potholes at the transfer station with the 5000 to come from the transfer station recycling special revenue fund created in 2003 for this purpose. No increase so would... Setting be aside the funding aspect of it, what I'm curious about is, A, uh, 
were you um, actually consulted about this, Mike? Is this something that we could have the highway department do for the town? Well, or is it well, something that we do need to outsource? Well, I got to, is that three questions in one? <laughs> Yes. Okay. I think so she's I think, only allowed one at a that's time. That's what I yeah. was thinking. Yeah. So the first one is, I was I wasn't consulted in it. Um, what what are we referring to as potholes? I know there's washouts in the gravel area. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Okay. So those that's not potholes. Those are washouts. That's not asphalt. Those are gravel areas that need to be graded because it's just like a dirt road. You got to grade it, maintain it. Um, I don't. I don't see it being five thousand dollars. How did you come up with that number, Pete? I uh, just based it on the crush wrap base I brought in last year for those two holes, you know, the two low spots rather, and uh, I have a bunch of trailer ones over by the dumpster that I need to get filled. I was expecting to get quite a few loads out of it. By the way, we cannot hear Pete if he's not at the microphone. Oh, true, yeah. So, so I think what Pete just told us was he based it on some work he did last time around. But, um, you know, the only other thing I would add is <clears throat> the way this is written, it would be no means no. Um, so if this did not fail, then we'd have to leave all those the way they are, so. So, so how, and I'm asking you guys, maybe you can rely, to, you know, so Pete doesn't have to come back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, so right now, what I'll put in that Warren article in, washouts would be covered, they have the backhoe, they have the manpower. Mm -hmm. So the only thing they're looking for to purchase would be the wrap to put into those holes, correct? And Pete is shaking his head, yes. Yes, yeah. okay. Um, how are you paying for it now? How did you pay for it last year? Uh, last year, it came out of the budget. So last year, Pete just said last year he, he used his budget. So this could be, you know, another option where you could put this as a line item in your budget. That's where I'd put it. There is a line item currently. That I but you could increase it. Then I'd increase that line item. Well, you, that, that would be the way to do it. Yeah. Did that line item overrun this year? Very little. So it, very little those in TV land. Very little, and it, it overran very little. Yeah. And so, that is with that line item covering filling in those washouts last yeah. year, right? Well, when you say last year, Pete, was it last year, the current budget? As in budget? 2020. The 2020 budget. So that line item was, was subtracted that work you're talking about, okay. So I'm just spitballing here. Can I? Is this the last item I have tonight? I hope so. All right. Yeah. So to get through this item, yeah. my recommendation would be: don't put it in as a warrant article. Increase the line item on that maintenance budget by eight hundred dollars and move along. I would agree. Right? Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Pete? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody on TV, good with that? I'm good with that. That'll give you three more loads of material a year, a year. Yeah. so you're, you're good to yeah. go. Yeah. So I think we're striking that one. So I do think we can let you go, Mike. Matt, yeah, thank you so much. No problem. Run quick, Mike. But keep your phone. Run fast. Yeah, keep your phone on, just in case. <laughs> thank you. So the thank fire you. department has a couple here, which I personally, I don't see any concerns with. I don't know if people want to talk to them, but the SCBA <coughs> seems pretty straightforward to me. It's a life safety thing. Uh, the chief I am all for it. I'm just curious whether or not um, we're going oh, Pete, to we're try again Thank for you. a grant Thank this you. year. See you, Pete. I'm sorry, Lisa. I, I said I, I, I'm only, um, my only question is, are we going to try again for a grant for this? Because I believe once you have purchased it, then you can no longer get the grant, right? My understanding on that is that we need to be denied, like if the voters vote it down, we have a better chance of getting a grant the following year. But I believe our Mr. Chairman is expired already. So Chief El Cadino's on, so oh, we'll okay. get over to him. I didn't yeah. know he was yeah. still there. Yep. Evening. Uh, Nancy's 100% correct. 
we've applied for the grant uh, a couple of times. This past uh, try, we made it to the peer review, which is the final stage. And one of the things that they found was the fire department has never asked the voters for the funds to purchase it. So that's why there is a warrant article. If the warrant article passes, then we will not be asking for SCBAs, we will be asking for something else. This year, the grant just opened, we are working to possibly get an exhaust system for the fire station. We were hoping that that exhaust system was gonna come in with the bond, but unfortunately, we're on the sprinkler system, so we have to find the funds someplace else. Uh, we haven't tried for the exhaust system in the past because we've been doing the SCBAs, and we were told that until we get an occupancy permit, we probably wouldn't get approved for the exhaust system, but we're still gonna try for it. So this has to get done. Uh, if it gets approved, we get the SCBAs. If it doesn't get approved, we will try again the next round. Thank you, Chief. All right, and so that's that one. Uh, I think it's good as written. Yeah, I think you're right. And number nine was the chief has spoken to us about this one before for the commercial fire alarm uh, uh, fees for the false alarms, right? Any- Mr. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Chief. Just to save you some time, can you strike number nine? I had a conversation with the town's building inspector. Uh, he believes there's an RSA already in place that gives the town the authorization to already uh, do fines set by the state. All right, so I you like can it. Strike number nine. I like it. Thank you, Chief. I like it too. So keep us posted on that. Um, so I think that's it for the fire chief, right? Yeah. Yep. So thank you, Chief. Um, you Have can, a great night. Thank you. You can hang around if you want, but you know. I'm good. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Uh, number 10 thank is you. our standard um, social services with the edits in red. Any, everybody good with this? We need to discuss the Lamprey Health Care uh -huh. uh, busing is yep. now being offered by Vicary Center. And um, Lisa thought maybe it might be a board discussion because it's a different company or a different source. To me, it's the same dollar amount and it does the same purpose, um, but it's up to the board if you want to sponsor that one or not. You're saying remove Lamprey Healthcare? Lamprey yeah. gave it up. Um, last year, we ended up getting a credit back on some of the money that we um, appropriated for them. But now, now the same service is being provided by Rockingham. By Vic Gary Center. The Meals, uh, it's the Meals, meals on, on Wheels, wheels. Yeah. yep. I'm fine with that. Anybody, it's the same service. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it was brought up and discussed. Correct. That, so that, because it's been the same provider that the voters have been voting on. And I wanted to make sure that we were all aware that while Lamprey is no longer offering that service, there is another provider that is offering it. They do provide another service for us already. So technically you could be saying Rockingham Nutrition Meals on Wheels for the total of the 29 plus the 1600, yep. because it's, you know, Rockingham Meals on Wheels, nutrition and transportation or right. breaking it out. You see what I'm saying? I just yep. wanted it discussed. Sure. I think we're happy. Thank okay, you. Okay, guys, one thing. So even though the senior center is closed right now, they're still offering this. Well, yeah, this is Meals on Wheels, which means meals that are delivered yeah, okay. to the seniors that cannot receive. Okay, not good. Because go I, go I was looking at the website and because I've never heard of them, honestly, so I'm looking them up. It just says, uh, if you please know that we are going to be closed, but I guess they are still doing Meals on Wheels. 
Yep. All right, so okay. number 14 is the standard senior trips. Oh, my what happened to off. 11, 12, and 13? I, I guess I missed. <laughs> my numbering is off, sorry. But the, so the numbering's off, so oh, there's not gosh. three phantom. We already removed okay, them. Good. No. Good. Good. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, the made it shorter. number four, because I saw that 20, and I'm like, oh, my God, how, do, how is this Yeah, 20? yeah. All Thank right, you. So, <laughs> So the 4,500 senior trips, I think that's it, an exact duplicate. Yeah, that's a duplicate. regular annual thing. Is that going to be number 11? Yes, it'll uh, be. Uh, actually, 11. it'll be less. We've struck be, another couple. Yeah, there's two we got rid of, so it'll be even better. It'll be like nine or something. Right. But I mean, right here, there's no 11, 12, yeah, 13. Right, right. Yeah, sorry. I didn't even catch that's okay. that. So number 15 is the lifeguards. Again, we just, I think we put it up at $100 or so. Uh, to make sure we're covering the lifeguards, the supervisor, and the equipment. So that's, we'll let it fly once again to see if people are into that. Yep, um, um, the voters approved it last year. They may approve it again this year, so yeah. I'm good with offering it. Great. And then um, <clears throat> as started last year, the police chief has this, um, this capital reserve fund and what the suggestion was that he he goes to the voters and asks for uh, money to be uh, raised and appropriated and put into this fund so he can use it either for repairs and maintenance or if there's a situation where cruisers are hopeless then he can accrue money in there to buy a new one so that's what that one is same as last year i believe Yep. yep, and it's what we need. Yep. yep. Um, all right, so Greeny Skateboard Park is the gentleman on. Was he on, Paul? Was it Mr. Murray? I don't think so, because uh, we, I can we weren't publishing the phone number. We just wanted department heads, I was told. Okay, yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. So the only thing I would say here is, is stay tuned, because <clears throat> he went to the rec meeting last night, and we explained to him the difficulty he might have with a large sum like that over five years. So what he's going to do is he's going to probably do a petition warrant article to establish a revolving fund for the project and ask the voters to raise an appropriate, appropriate about 10000 this year. Then he's going to go off. So this is going to get rewarded. Yeah, and he'll go off and go after grants, do fundraising, and then see what happens in another year to see if you raise an appropriate more. So essentially trying to um, do this in, in short little so Matt, baby I, steps. I spoke with DRA today. I didn't reach out to him because I wanted the board to um, read the Warren article number 20, which is really 17. That's the one that you proposed last night. Mm -hmm. DRA approved of that, so with permission of the board, I'll go back to Mr. Murray tomorrow, <laughs> ask him to withdraw his Warren article and use this one. He can get his petition signatures. Yep. The board wanted a petition, right? You don't want yeah, to sponsor so. it. Yeah, that's I what I thought. So. Everybody cool with that? So he, he's got a tight deadline because he'll have to do that essentially this weekend at the yes, transfer correct. station. Um, <clears throat> All right, so we're on to what's pictured here is 18. But it's 15. Oh. But it's really... It's going to be 14 now yeah. if we remove that other so one. So Fish is going to get a short version of that. Yeah, so is it? Is this just... Can, um, is Trish on? Trish, yeah, you on. can't speak on it. Trish, just, just give them the short part of this whole thing. We're going to okay. do away with this, I think. <laughs> The short part is that um, the emergency management, we've got a couple of funds, but they are for different purposes. We have one that's just for damage during storms to town property and town buildings. What we need is an article like this, and Nancy talked to um, DOR today, and I talked to Nancy. We may have something that is an emergency management revolving fund already under 3195H, but I think in looking at it, we may have to amend it. The purpose is 
Um, one of the things that we're lucky uh, during this whole horrible COVID-19 <laughs> is we've been paid daily for our electronic sign. We are moving it place to place. We have to keep a log. We have to take pictures of it. And as long as the messages are to do with COVID, we're getting money from the feds. Um, we need a place to put that money. And the funds that we have, right, the accounts that we have right now um, don't allow us to put that kind of money that we get from the feds into it. If we have an emergency management revolving fund, we can put that money in and now use it for not only before, during, and after emergencies, but it will allow us to put um, state money, federal money, um, repair equipment that is in dire straits. We've got antennas that really need to be replaced. Um, so now we'll have a place to put this money. What Nancy found today, we thought maybe we could use, but we may have to tweak it. The one that we actually have that was approved in 2013, I'll read it really quickly, it's short. It's nothing like the one on your screen. It says, um, it's a, a revolving fund, according to RSA 3195H, for the purpose of paying emergency management payroll, training and other expenses. All monies received from the state of New Hampshire for emergency management purposes will be deposited into this fund. The town treasurer will have custody of the monies in the fund and shall pay out the same only upon order of the governing body and no further approval is required by the legislation body to expend. Such funds may be expended only for the purposes for which the fund was created. The only thing that has to be tweaked about this, and Larry can jump in too, and Nancy, is we needed to be able to say that all monies received not only from the state of New Hampshire, but from the federal oh, no. government, because our grants, the money that we're getting now is from the feds. Um, so we need to tweak that to say state emergency management and federal grants or any revenue um, to go into this account. I, I don't know, Nancy, did you, when you talked to, um, was it Robin you talked to today? Um, the selectmen all have the email from DRA today on this. Um, okay. Yeah, and Tricia, the way I understand it is you cannot modify a fund or a per purpose. What you would have to do is essentially discontinue that fund, which would put the funds already in it into the general fund and then create a new fund with your changes that you wanted it's the similar to what we had to do with the cable revolving fund I think yeah that was two years ago yeah mm -hmm. yeah so, so you, again, you're going to have to discontinue this one and then um create the new one and and so so the one you're looking at right i'm talking about two different things here the the expendable trust fund that you see with that eight thousand three thirty nine that's something different. That's not what Nancy found today. Nancy found a revolving fund for emergency management under 3195H already. Yes. So but even revolving fund to revolving fund, I, I, we had to do the same thing with cable. Yeah, we're not doing a revolving fund. This one's going to be, well, I guess it's already established in 2015. We've already got an established one, right. Yep. So I guess Larry and I have to look at this because we've already got an established one, but because it says monies received from the state of New Hampshire for emergency management purposes might mean then the federal money we're getting can't go in that one. And that's, that's how, what we should clarify with DRA. Right, yes, exactly. Because okay. if and we if can DRA the federal, says no, it can't, then we do want to. Then we have to rewrite it, exactly. Yeah. So that's the short and long of it. All right. So we'll we'll look for a rewrite on this. So it's just rewording yeah. a warrant out of that. So yeah, I'll check yeah. with DRA. But checking with DRA first to see yeah. whether or not funds from federal or federal funds can be put in, or if the way the original article was written prevents federal funds from being deposited. Right. That's yep. my concern. Exactly. Yep. I'll do that. All right, Nancy, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. So, All right. I have a quick question on this that oh, Kim oh, brought sorry. up to me. So on these, these, fund, these grants that you're getting, are these grants that you're putting in, that you want to put into this fund, are they ones that um, we were, the town was reimbursed 
No, this is, so the grant money that we wrote that reimbursed town departments, that's one thing. The sign money is not reimbursement of, of anything. It's for our sign. So no department expended that money. That's EOC money. We own the sign. Okay, and that was Kim's question. Paying us. That I'm was sorry? Kim's question to make sure that it wasn't t town money that no. was reimbursed. Okay, of course well, not. No. no. All right, That'd great. be stealing. Right. What's the matter with you? Hmm? And <laughs> That'd be <laughs> stealing. What's the matter with you? Yeah, we're not Shame in favor. Shame on you, Diane. <laughs> And as far as, Tricia, you had the question today about taking the money from the other capital reserve account and putting it into this. Well, that will be a second conversation because if we can use the revolving account you already found, yep. then we're not even going to look at this warrant article that's up in front of you. Yep, okay, because we can't do that according to DRA. You would have to um, close out that account. It would go in the general fund, and then you'd have to do a warrant article to right. take it from the general fund to this yep. new account. Right. Okay. All right, so, and I think it's technically our last one. So are we taking out, Tricia, your old, your old big long article? Well, I think we've, we've got to talk to DRA about the one we already have. Like Lisa okay. said, let's find out if we can deposit federal money in that. And if we can, okay, then I think it accomplishes what Larry and I want. But Larry and I will have to have a conversation tomorrow as well. Okay. Cool, thanks. So it's technically 19 on this piece of paper, but um, sort of the last one, it looks like this is Charlie's warning. Yep. Charlie? <laughs> well, Tell us all about it. Uh, basically, I believe that the work that the Board of Selectmen do uh, is considerable, uh, the responsibilities that they have to take, that I believe that they need an increase in their salary. Any and on? the increase would Go be ahead. from 3500 a year to 7500 a year. Other towns get more, so other towns get less. I'm gonna have to say absolutely not. I mean, that's more than double what we're currently getting. Okay, I, I, I think that's a lot of money to be asking for. I mean, uh, increasing the stipend, I could be willing to vote for, but not doubling our stipend. Yes, I, I know we do a lot of work, because so I do you, a lot you, of work. You throw it against the wall and see if it'll stick. If Did it don't stick, out? you can go uh, forward. No, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. Did you see no. the um, article I from a few it. years ago where another When was the last time the selectman oh, got no, it? I, I never got to it. I, uh, I can one see. conversation at a time, if Thank we you. could. Uh, Lisa, you were saying something? I was saying... There was another news article a few years ago about another town board who tried to do the same thing. More um, than double their current stipend. And that's not us. I, I look out for the taxpayers. When I first got elected, I didn't know there was a stipend at all. I, I just cannot stand behind a 100% increase in the board's stipend. So, I um, concur. Kate, what were you going to say, Kate? I just was feel similarly that is a huge increase. I mean, we're arguing about veterans' taxes of two hundred fifty dollars. Okay. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta say, here. I'm, I'm in agreement in that um, there are a lot of people in this town who don't have jobs right now, and the people who do have jobs aren't expecting raises this year, and uh, so. I mean, I'm taking money out of my own pocket, but I couldn't support this. Larry, what do you think? So would you guys support 2,000, split it in half? Only because we haven't, the select probably hasn't had a raise in, God, it's gotta be at least 10 to 15 years. Yeah, I'm sure it's been a long time. Um, I'm, I'm for zero, but what do you guys think, Kate and Lisa? Uh, maybe 500 increase per person most, or zero. I can't hear what you said. She said 500 bucks. 500? Or, or nothing. So and I'm with five. Kate. I would say no more than 500 or zero increase. Leave it the way it is this year. So there's two for uh, 35 to 4,000. <laughs> That's so. a scratch the whole thing. Right. So 
So they, these guys are 500 or nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm zero. Charlie, you're obviously for the 775 still. Are you, is there any room? Well, I, I just believe throw it out there and see what happens. That was just That's my belief. Right. There's what a we will find out is whether the people of this community appreciate the Board of Selectmen and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They'll either give it to you or they won't give it to you. That's that simple. What do you think so it doesn't like? matter whether it's 500 or 10,000. Yeah. I think my problem is that this is a proposed oh, by the Board of Selectmen. My problem is I want what? To get reelected. That, that has nothing to do with my decision. If I get reelected, I, you would think I would want the bigger salary. As I said, I, that's not the reason I got elected in the first place. It's not a reason for me to want to get reelected. $3,500 is not a lot of money. And I'm that's not, not for, why I do this. I'm not up for re-election, and I agree. This is not the year. So you got to come up with a number where you're going to have a, a favorite to a five and oh. You yeah, can't, you unfortunately, can't it's not it multiple choice. So then to zero. Yeah, and, and two, one, and then quite zero frankly, out. I'd rather you know see this as a two, petition one, warrant I'm article and not as an zero article out. proposed by the selectmen. The face. I agree, but... It'd be but funny, like, if it gets there, and then the selectmen do not recommend this article. I know funny. that that would be interesting. Be really I mean, it's well overdue, but yeah, I mean, it could be overdue I just, by a small yeah, increase, time. but this is such not the year for it. Yeah, I, I t Kate said that a couple of times. I tend to agree with that. This is not the year for it. I'm somebody who's going to be on the ballot too, and it's not about that. It's a, it's just not the year for it. Um, and I understand that Charlie makes a point that I've made a, a hundred times, and that you put it out there and see what happens. But I think when, you, when you're when you the selectman and you put it out there about yourselves, well, let's, that's a let's different message. Let's put it this message. way, Matt. I'll withdraw my warrant article. Okay. So everybody's cool with I'm that? I'm okay with that. Okay. All right, so what's our final tally, like 14? But I won't give anybody a raise. <laughs> town employees are different. Everybody else gets raises. <laughs> that's right, everybody in town. What are we at, like 14? I think we've probably got like 14, yeah. Pretty good. Uh, to me, if you're right around 15, you're probably at the right amount. But that's not counting any petitions that might come in. It could, yeah. Yeah. But, all right, so that was Warren articles, and as we said, those will be edited, and we'll be looking at those at, and as a segue here, I'm on to letter D, which is January January 18th public hearing. Now that is, is that the public hearing? That's or is the public the hearing. The public hearing. Yes. So we would go over the warrants. Yes, and in the budget. The budget. Yep. yep. So. And that's where you recommend as well. So, um, you know, at this stage, I, I will say, and maybe it's too early to say this because the meeting's not over, but I appreciate the Cable Commission, Diane and Jamie, for their work tonight because I think this has gone pretty well yeah. as a hybrid meeting. Would the folks on the on the Zoom agree? Yes. After the uh, initial uh, kinks that they worked out, yeah. it, the rest of the meeting has been going yeah, pretty well. it's been great. Right, yeah, so so the reason I bring that up, and again, I, <clears throat> I probably should have waited till the meeting was over, but we're talking about, do we wanna do the public hearing as we would normally do the public hearing with the exception of having the hybrid option for people who would rather do it that way? So we would still have this room, we would still be in the room, we would be just like this. So you want the public hearing, public in here? So the public would be limited, right? Because we can't have a full. Yeah. Well, if you do this, you could probably put 30, and it's 25 what, to 30. And it's what we get every year. Is that how yeah. much we normally, that you said we can have up here right now? Yeah. Okay. I think it was more like in the 40s, but I was just. Yeah. So we could, we could uh, at this stage, Diane, we can only post via the Eagle Tribune, right? Correct. We missed. But then the we're still going to have it on Zoom, correct? Like this, so people yeah. can. Is that that's what you're just? Yeah, that's, that's what, what the hybrid is, and I yeah, think okay. hybrid's a good idea. Yep. So what I would, um, I don't know if we need a motion, but I would motion to 
uh, post for the public hearing using um, the uh, hybrid option and post it in, you know, as we would normally, but this time in a, a paid newspaper. I'll second. <clears throat> Aye. Katie seconded. Any discussion? So how do I list it on the warrant? Oh, you can finish your vote. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 So how do we list it everything. on the warrant where it normally says that we're gonna meet here? Do you, we are, do you that's list? all the same. You'd still do that, but you wouldn't need. Yeah, look at it this way is we're not, we're not needing the governor's emergency order to do anything because okay. we're still having a quorum in, I assume, we're still having a quorum in place in this room mm -hmm. and we're just giving an additional option of Zoom. So do you have to list Zoom in there as well? Yes, you do. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah you have to put that in a posting so people That's, know they can dial yes. in and actually attend That's the meeting. That's what I need to know. Would yeah. it be um, hybrid or would it be town hall and Zoom? I think it's uh, town hall Zoom. and Zoom. People understand okay. Zoom better than hybrid. Okay. Yeah, so right. I would just list it the way you always do it and then after town hall, you state uh, or to attend so electronically. So you can say location, can, yeah. town hall to, to town hall road or Zoom and then the conference information. So Diane, on, on that Saturday, well, if, you, if you can do a link on the homepage of the town of Newton, and people, if they went to the town of Newton, can just click that link and then get into the meeting instead of sending everybody an individual email. Is that possible? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's also and it's also on the um, hearing on the public the posting for the public hearing. There's a link right there for it too. Okay. Yeah, the the post always when when she does it for this type of setup, it's always has the link. So if they have it electronically in their email, it's a click. Um, yeah. Right, but that would have to get emailed out to everyone. That was what? No, on that's the on the agenda, on the town website. On the website. town website, okay. When right. I pro post the agenda, there's a link there that you okay. can click on. Right. Kate's waving to I'd like to suggest that we encourage people to attend by hybrid Zoom. It's in the best interest of everyone's safety to have fewer people in yeah. town hall. The, I mean, we could, the reality is we don't get that many people though. This might be the year we get 400 people more. Yeah. <laughs> if you keep your so, department you, heads Kate. and employees home, we wouldn't have anybody in here. Exactly, yeah. So can I make a comment? Sure. Um, the other thing is um, when you're posting it, Nancy, um, and or Diane, I can give you the verbiage but they're, that they're recommending to use. We have to remind people that um, we may hold, whether it's a public hearing or an annual meeting or whatever, um, at town hall. However, we're complying with social distancing and occupancy, which means you also can access via the Zoom meeting. There's a little language that they recommend putting in there. Okay. So that people show up and we're in capacity, they're not all aggravated that we have to say, go home and, and click on the link now. Okay, yeah, if you could give me that wording, that'd be great. All right, I will. And the other thing, again, just my personal comment, this meeting I think went great. Uh, the thing that made it for me was when Diane shared the screen. So if yeah. the public is gonna see what we're talking about, yeah. it was so helpful to be able to see what you guys are talking about. So I think the public needs that as well. So that was very successful, thank you. Yeah, good idea, yeah. Whenever possible, we could should yeah. try to share the screen. Yep. Um, all right, so <clears throat> that's D for the public hearing. I'm assuming at this point, we're probably gonna do that for, is it January 30th? Mm -hmm. No, for the oh, deliberative? Yeah. okay. Yep. So when do we have to notify the carriage town for deliberative? In, in actuality, we do not run the deliberative, correct? No, the moderator does. So I guess, do we want to make... Actually, you're stuck with me this time. Oh, are you the, the pro tem? I'm the assistant moderator. I'll be doing the deliberative. Nice. Oh, really? Yeah. She's going to be the moderator. Oh. Nice. I'm going to bring a taser and a gavel. No, I'm only kidding. 
<laughs> the, uh, so do we want, as a board, do we want to recommend, because I think we can only recommend, we recommend the same approach to the moderator or the pro tem moderator. Is that what we want to do? For the hybrid, yes. Yeah. So Jamie just texted me and told me that if you have over 100 on Zoom, then someone cannot attend. And, and then if someone cannot attend, it's an illegal meeting? Yep. So. Well, actually, I, we, I can't we see us getting 100 people. No. That's oh. a wonderful problem to have, and I agree with you, Lisa. I don't see it happening. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, um, I believe the Zoom phone line is greater than 100. I could be wrong. But if you have a glitch with the Zoom, does that stop the whole town meeting, though? Uh, the, the glitch would, the board would have to vote on, at the public hearing, the board would have to vote on what to do. Yes, because, there Because if go. it's, if it's, what is Chief Elcadino's Joe Schmuckatelli? Yep. If Joe Schmuckatelli is the only one who can't get in, we're not gonna stop because somebody's having operator error. Exactly. You know, if, if Xfinity went down for the whole town, then you'd probably want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still have to meet the deadlines for posting. Okay, moving on. Well, we're not done with this yet. So the oh, January oh. 30th, are we going to make the recommendation to the moderators that this is the way to move forward? Agreed? Everybody's yes. good with that? Yes. Okay, nobody's against that? Cool. Wait, All can right. I just ask a quick question? Is the no more, th not that it's a problem we're gonna have probably, but how come we can only have 100 on Zoom? Is that always the case? Is that our, our uh, account or how does that work? Is that our account? I, I think that's, our account. that's so a we Zoom limitation. So we the account if she, we find this is a problem in the future. Okay, good. Yeah, we had two. It's a good problem to have. Yes, that's yes. the uh, sandboard. No. No? Oh, for the uh, public and caucus. Yeah, interesting. So, if we could get more info on that, because we might be able to get a premium or something like that. But, um, all right. So, uh, 2021 proposed budgets. We have three of them left. Is that the deal? There have been um, two are uh, new, I think, and um, there's a couple that are amended. So the executive, that one up, 3103? Yep. What, what, what line item, without looking through? That the was the uh, pay increase for me and Diane. Salaries? Yep. Personnel administration, general government building. Um, general government building, we need the board's input on some of the um, improvement and repair line items. Those are the ticket items when we need to fix or repair or whatever. So Diane did a, a report for each of the town buildings and their maintenance needs and their repair needs. And I believe um, they've all given their priorities. So we can't put everything in because we will, it'll really raise the budget a lot, so. So did you approve the executive one? Say what? Did they approve the executive ones? No, I'm just giving them a synopsis. Oh. Larry asked which ones we had. So do you want to look at the executive first and just approve that one? Or? Yeah, I mean, um, it seems in line with what? Yeah, nothing really changed. Um, Kim did take the telephone, she reduced the telephone line down because that's coming out of the cable uh, revolving account now. And then it's just the salary pay increases. Anybody have any questions on this one? Really, I'm just seeing the salary. So you have to take them one at a time, right? Yep. To accept the increase? Well, it's a, um, I, I, it's, it's a proposed. Right. Into, I would just do it as we normally would do it, right? So yes. is Larry making the motion to accept the 2021 proposed executive budget 
draft executive budget into the draft town draft budget? Correct. I think I, I heard I him say so. that. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah, I I couldn't really. I need a second, though. <laughs> Anybody want a second? A second. Seconded by Lisa. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, I think I heard everybody, right? Yep. Um, the, the next budget is right, the page right after your executive. It's in the same Financial area. Financial admin. Okay. So right? Personnel administration, correct. Personnel, yep. This is all the insurance and all that, right? And right. Now that we've got all the payrolls and the budgets done, um, Kim was able to pull this together. Okay. So again, we're looking at payroll increases, right? Yep, and insurances, yep. Oh, I was already on that page. All right, anybody want Can to- Can you post this up on the board for people to see? I don't know if you have it to do that. I don't know what she said. Uh, screen up? share. It's, you don't have it? Well, she's talking more for the uh, the millions of viewers at home. So I'll, uh, for the press administration budget to accept into the 2021 uh, draft budget for the town of Newton. You don't need the amount, right? No. 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 Uh, second for anybody? From me. Lisa's a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The other one, general, everybody? Government. So that one decreased, correct? General government? No. Nope, I'm going huh? wrong way. Am I looking at the wrong figures? Yeah, because. Um, yeah, it went from 213 to 152. Yeah, we took a lot of the uh, oh, items right. out to do with the, that come out of the cable revolving. Is that correct? The. Uh, um, yes, but internet there's internet and telephone. But, and it, but we didn't decrease it really because we have to add in the maintenance. Uh, oh yeah, right. There are some line items that are not added in there at this time because yep. we needed you guys to look at it and see what you wanted to do. Uh, let me get the budget up here for those at the. Um, I think it's this one here. Yeah, there you go, Trish. Now you can see it. Now what about the spreadsheets? Because they have to kind of pick what we're going to put in these, right? Mm -hmm. So in your, in the same general government folder, if you look behind those, the two sheets with the budget, you're going to see a bunch of sh other sheets in your book. For those of you at home, uh, Let's see, where did I put that? Uh, here. Da, 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 da. I think it's this one. Okay, now I have to stop sharing that for a second there and share this other one. Where'd it go? What's this first page for annual expenses for what? Okay, so on the first page is the, this is the um, total. These are all, Oh, hang on, let me go uh, page one here. Where's page one? Just for the grass cutting and all that? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Wow, this didn't do what I thought it would do. Okay, hold on. Didn't do it the way it did. Okay. Same one. What are we 
looking at? I'm lost there. Hold on, we're looking. Diane, I have it. Do you want me to email it to you? No, I've got it. I just got to find it. It's all in the back of everything. Oh, okay. Here it is. Found it. I too many, too many screens up. Sorry. All right. So let's do this. Expand this so you can see it. So th this page here that we're on, oh, you're, you're off it now. Okay, Which so one are we going to start with? What page? So the first page, totals, this is accumulation of all maintenance that we do each year for each building. Strictly like, you know, maintenance basically. So uh, it includes, it doesn't include the landscaping, it's just basic. So if we go to the fire station uh, maintenance page, these are all the things we pay for, okay? So alarm testing, uh, as you, you can read down what all this stuff is. So these are just things that we do every year. Mm -hmm. And what Kim did is she said from items five and six here, that is in a, it comes out of the, sec the security line item in the general government. And then seven through 17 will come out of the maintenance line item. So she's basically asking us which line item we want to use for those. Right. I, I, I think at this point what I'm trying to do is just give you an overview of what you pay, what has to be paid out every year. Mm -hmm. Then, so if you want to do it that way, we can go back to total. So this right here, this number, I guess we, we would put that into um, maintenance and she'll break it up the way it needs to. But that's what you have, add that into this, mm -hmm. okay? So now you have what they want to do like for requests or for repairs. So the fire, st let's, uh, the fire station has these items that he has requested for this year. So this would go into an, to improvements line item mm -hmm. on the global general government. So you can see right there how much it is. Right. So I think we need to kind of pick and choose what we want to put in. So none of this is in the general, correct, yet? That is correct. It's not in here because we didn't know which ones you wanted to put in. Oh, where's number two on the priority list? <laughs> he already did it, so I had just... Uh, oh, okay, yep. Those were the, uh, the cords, Yeah. the power cords from the ceiling. Yep. So those were already done. Yeah, uh, and three, he said he was uh, trying for a grant on, I believe. Say that again? A grant, he's applied for a grant. On what, the vehicle exhaust? Yeah. Yeah, he was talking about um, a grant for exhaust this year instead of a grant for the scuba. Yeah, I thought that's what he said tonight. So, so I don't I, mind giving I would... him five and nine, that's it. Five and six, Larry? There's um, no six. I'm okay with uh, priority one too. Oh, mine says five um, I, six. I'm. Hmm. I don't know if I, I still don't like the idea of twenty-five thousand dollars for a street entrance sign. I don't think we need it. That's why I said five and nine. Well, what are you calling? Oh, you're saying row numbers. Yeah, gotcha. the, the, the row numbers. <laughs> yeah, row numbers. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Which are also priority one and four, right? Correct. Okay, yes, that's what I was thinking as well, one and four. So, okay, priority. Any? So, are we, I don't think we need to make a motion on this, but no, they just put them into the general budget, yeah, right? Yeah, and then we'll know what's in Is there. Is everybody okay with... Val, you good with that? Yeah. One and four? So you're okay with one and four? Yeah, put that in. Okay, so one and four. Okay, so now we'll go to police station requests. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have any quotes on these. I don't, I mean... Then you're not going to get anything. <laughs> well, I mean, some of this stuff you need to think about, especially like the siding on the building. There were actual holes. So, if we were to put put it out to him to get the quotes, he doesn't have. Yeah, I. 
-hmm. where would you know when would we be able to look at this again because I I do understand that a lot of this stuff is important but we have to have some numbers rather than just saying oh, it's probably about this you know something mm -hmm. solid at this point and can't we use some of that 50k we get in that you can use some of that fund or money that we take in for rent if you we want. could but we also have a um, a final bill on true, the, true. on the pump house and the sprinkler system yep, I agree. yeah and i i'd be curious i would like to know the cost of um five six seven and that's it maybe ten so i mean i i guess the thing is we don't have enough information yeah, we have here. numbers we can't do anything unless we have no numbers. but I'm, I'm looking at what it is that he's requesting to be done so ada compliance i can see that being a necessity i want to know what the number is so if fixing you... siding if we don't yeah. don't fix the siding we resist we risk additional damage to the actual structure of the building because elements are able to get in and attack the wood and rot it out and that's so I, I see that as something that we really need to prioritize so that's why I said those are the ones I'd actually like to see the numbers on which ones Lisa again 527 527 okay so okay. then we can tell them those are the ones we want him to get quotes on at this point yes and that's yeah the rest of it i don't see being necessary this year and where we already have a uh, several increases in other places uh, i'd like to hold off probably at least another year if forever on the others by the way um text from chief el cadino he's already done the outlets out of his budget he's what he's done the outlets on the second floor out of oh, his yes. budget <laughs> it doesn't do okay so that's one more we don't have to do exactly so <laughs> that helps all right, good. Go in the right direction. So all we have to do on him then is just number four. Yep. I yep. Mean, yeah, it's just the, uh, the the keypads. Cool. Okay. All right. So all right. do we need um, a motion for this now? What about town hall? Do we have needs? Oh yeah. So I need to keep going through this, okay? Yep. Unfortunately. So again, this is the maintenance stuff that we do. Over there, total maintenance is 17, over 17,000. That's included in that first total that you saw, okay? Right, the 43,000. And the 43,000, yes. So See, I'm paying attention. Okay, so for ta ta hall, town hall maintenance, this is what we spend a year here. For our repairs, um, these are estimates that I got, you know, like I said, in 2017, the siding. Uh, the stairs to the selectman doors, that just needs some kind of repairs. Uh, I don't think it's expensive. You're probably looking less than $1,000. Um, again, the, the ones I have quotes for, you can see here. Ed's flooring to fix the uh, town hall, the floor in the town clerks. Um, the duress systems, that was just something we were thinking about because we weren't sure that Protection One system was actually kind of working. And they were going to charge us a lot, right, to come out and check it. Yep. So some of this is small stuff. Uh, basically, this is probably number 10, has to be, should be done. If you had to prioritize, that would be my 10 and uh, 8. And uh, nine is cosmetic, but it would definitely make it the town hall look a little neater down there with all the holes. What about your door that's leaking? Um, I think that's a gutter problem. Okay. So I was I'm not sure how we're going to get that fixed. So that's what's my it, thoughts on that. What's the grand total for the, I'm not, 60? far enough away I can't see the number so which this one here yeah 40,000 for not, everything hmm? for all, everything. all town hall stuff right but um, not everything just what I could manage to get quotes for yeah 
Okay, now, the, the brick what is the brick foundation? So, um, you know, in the selectman's door, when you, that foundation is right there, and the birds have been picking at it. And um, we noticed that it's, the bricks, and some of the bricks are actually coming out. And I had asked um, somebody to get me a mason and to give me a you know, quote. Unfortunately, that person hasn't gotten back to me. And I don't know any, so it kind of like all needs, uh, what's it called, pointing? I think it's what it's referred to. So it's on both sides of the, uh, town, hall. the town hall. So is the integrity of the foundation at risk here? What did you say? Is it at integrity. risk? The uh, integrity. Are we gonna cave in? I don't, I'm not a structural engineer, so I could not answer that. That was in your job description. And it's not in my you. job description, right? <laughs> <laughs> it definitely needs to be fixed when you can pull a brick out, if you ask me. Yeah. Especially yeah. it's a corner brick. So tomorrow, keep pulling them out, tell us what happens. Let's see what <laughs> happens. Okay, I could test the, it that um, way. <laughs> you know, I, I personally don't have an issue with this whole list because it's a lot of small dollar items. What, what are people thinking? Do we want to prioritize or do we want to run with this? Yeah, the only bigger ticket items are the siding repairs on the side and the rear. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm guessing these are holes as well, correct, Diane? Yeah, yeah. You're getting a lot of critters and a lot of bees in there. Yeah, and don't forget the video of the little mice coming down through the ceiling tile. And yeah. they, they did that just to get on the news. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> the, I th you know, this is our oldest building, right, essentially, so this is what happens, you know. And it's been let go for quite a while. Yeah. I think it's so. I, I'm okay with including these items in the budget. What, what's everybody think? Run with, with these as is. Anybody opposed to that? No. All right. So. So we're okay with that. We're okay with this list. Right. Okay. I'll probably put the siding is down towards the bottom and try to get the ceiling tiles and the stairs and the brick foundation fixed first. Yep. And the duress system, we'll look at that a little closer, but, I mean, um, just the, to make sure it works. <coughs> the other thing too is what we're doing here is, <sighs> is trying to get the budget approved. We can reprioritize right. based on the budget. Yep, okay. Uh, for the library, um, basically, this they don't spend too much in uh, maintenance. They're pretty good there. But their requests, are, obviously, the, probably the number one priority is the roof. Yeah, yeah and I'd say that's a must. Um, the, the other things, you know, the outside electrical, the oil furnace, I think if you put money aside for that, just in case it does go out, might be good. The other things are kind of small. The biggest thing, like I said, is really we should do the roof. Yeah, that was, they wanted that last year too. I think it's Correct. a good time. Yeah. And I think those two uh, wooden windows in the basement, because I think water's leaking in on those. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Now, isn't yeah. the library, they keep their, the, uh, the end of the year, if they have 10,000 left in their budget, they keep that, that doesn't come back to No, they funds. do not keep it, it comes back to us. We got, I think, around 3,800 back from the okay. library, yep. I also think the dehumidifier is something that should carry some weight as well because of all of the books and other materials that the library has, it's important to keep the library dry? Yep. And those are small ticket items anyway. Yep. I'm just saying I think it needs to be included. Yep. I'm not so sure about an outside electrical outlet. Well, to me, those aren't high priority, but, you know, we can see where we sit once we get a budget passed. <clears throat> And then the Marshall House. 
So are we okay? Am I, what am I doing with the library? What's everybody thinking? Do we want to go with the list as is, or do we want to pull out anything? For right now, the, the other items are small. They're just over $1,000. Uh, other than I'd say, if anything, I'd pull out the blue fence posts. What is I don't think on? that's an urgent sort of need that needs to be done. I'm not exactly the, the sure why we have blue fence posts, but... Repair list. Or repair list. That, that's fine. Yeah, we weren't sure what that was. We don't even have a price for that. So, so let's pull that out and then run with the rest. Everybody okay with that? Yep. What are yep. you pulling out? The blue fence, fence post. Post. Yeah, post. Post. yeah, I'm not sure what that was. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do that whole number, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, the Marshall House um, basically is in need of some windows and it needs a roof replacement as well. Now, we're talking to Bill, the roof is probably the most important thing here for the house and barn. I see all three of them as being needed. I mean, the fire extinguisher inspection, that should be under regular maintenance yeah, anyways. That, yeah, you don't have to worry about that one. That's in the part of the maintenance is total. This is the number you want to look at, the 6,900. Yep. Okay, that's... Yeah. I would say keep the windows in the roof. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the important stuff. Aren't there grants for historic buildings? Have he, has he already done those? Yeah, I don't know. What'd she say? Grant, do they, does a historical society yeah, go after grants? They must. We're not that active. They, they did. I, I can That's tell you they went after grants for this, yeah. so. And wait, wait, they did? I couldn't hear you, yes or no? Well, they have in the past for projects such as the curtain behind okay. me. So I don't, okay. I don't know if they do for so others. What were you but saying, Diane, they're we'll take a look. as active? So the, the historical society is not as active as it used to be. We're just basically trying to just maintain, maintain. until younger yeah. blood comes and helps, takes over. Yep, yep. So, um, for the transfer station, this is built into the total, so there's no, as far as I know, there was no maintenance there that needed to be, or repairs that need to be done that he told me about. Other than his washout. <laughs> yeah, right, right. What'd she say? <laughs> his washout oh. repairs. <laughs> so. so what I'll do then, we'll go back and we'll, with Kim and Nancy and I, and we'll add up all of this. Um, so I don't think you should accept the budget tonight yeah, I agree. until we get the final numbers in here. But I just, we just needed to get you, show you what is going on with yep. the buildings so, so that you have an idea. So my question is mm -hmm. for a June 18th public hearing, are, do we need to meet? Yes. So our next meeting scheduled is the 19th, which would be after that. So it seems like we're inevitably headed for an extra meeting. We have to in order to approve the budgets and the right. default budget. Yeah. So well, that we can finalize everything. So, so what you're are talking people about after the ninth no, meeting? Before, game? he's saying prior to, because the next meeting isn't until after the deliberative, or the public hearing, rather. What are people doing on the, would it be the 12th of January? What day is that on? That's a Tuesday. Okay. Uh, we wouldn't be able to use Zoom because the... Well, we could use mine or something. Planning board? Planning board, yeah. But you don't want... You want That would be public. You don't want yours for the public, though. It would be a public meeting, right? Yeah, we've done it before, actually. Oh. Wait, what's the best... When do we have to do this? Before? Or don't we have to do before the 19th, right? Is that what you're saying? Before the 18th. 18th. That's the public hearing. But Okay, so hmm, we're having one... So, I mean, I could even do the Monday, I think. The well, 11th? I, I doubt that I'll have any numbers for you. Right, so that's dependent, too. I mean, mm. so 
Do we want ev everybody cancel everything you're doing next week? <laughs> so, but I mean, maybe it's Thursday. I don't know. Thursday looks good. And keep your phone by you. When Kate. is school board? Wednesday. I'm saying Thursday looks good. Yeah. Shouldn't we just maybe pencil Tomorrow. something in? Tomorrow. You're looking Wednesday? at the 14th. The 14th, yeah. Yeah. That would Can't be we better. Just pencil it in to hold it down. So pencil it in. What time? Six. Six. <coughs> We're going to be done by 6:15. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, I say this every time. No other agenda <laughs> items, okay. please. Okay, when so we, I've got that. What's the date we're meeting? Thursday, Thursday the 14th, 14th for a, just to approve the final budget numbers. Thursday the 14th. I'm working, but are you doing the Zoom? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I could do it for We'll work. have the Zoom option. Um, what I strongly encourage, too, this is... Uh, I'm sure you've thought of this, is if we could have this emailed out uh, or posted well before, like 24 hours before, we can look at the budget and do all our, whatever okay. we need to do, so we can kinda get to voting, hopefully. And as you guys have done in the past, I personally liked it was, you know, here's option one, here's option two, here's option three, you know. I think for me, and the, the board can weigh in, but for me, I think based on salary raises for people, we are probably going to be going up. I think but right now what Kim said is the budget is lower than the default. That's, but once that's, we plug these numbers in, gonna, we'll see, <laughs> and then we can right. kind of give you some suggestions. It'd be maybe. wonderful if we could do that, but yep. but I think that you know this is a year we gave people raises that we didn't give the year before, so you know. Okay, okay next. All right, so that's it for the budget, right? Yep. For now. Yep. Uh, we already did the Warren Articles pay matrix updates. Anybody? Anyone? Lisa? Lisa? Yes? Did you do the pay matrix? You were supposed no. To, you were supposed to do the um, office, um, what is it, investigator or yeah, yeah. evidence man? Evidence and and oh, I thought we were discussing that in non-public first. Oh. Um, next meeting? Next meeting? <laughs> next meeting. No, that? the next, next. <laughs> the real meeting. So. Okay, tabled. Okay. Yeah. H, acceptance of updated personnel policy. This was, uh, we had some homework yep. to review. Are we ready to vote on this? Or? I hope so. Yeah, and like I said, th there's just a few minor things. Um, one of them was basically taken right from the state, and it has to do with the availability of health insurance after uh, they leave employment. So hopefully everyone had a chance to review it. So I, th I think that was the goal to, to just to be able to accept or not accept tonight. Um, so, does anybody want to make a motion? Yes, I move to accept the revised personnel policy effective 1-5-2021. Okay, anybody want to second it? Anyone? I'll second. Um, so, any discussion? I seconded, but I was muted. Oh, you were muted. So let's give it to Kate. <laughs> okay, we'll give it to Kate. Never let, let her say I haven't given her anything. So, um, okay, so any discussion? So all in favor? Aye. Aye. There were two ayes. Hold on, I'm just trying to, I didn't get a chance to. Where did Kate go? She's looking at her phone. I'm right here. Did you aye? Did Are you aye? I aye a while ago, I seconded, so I'm an aye. Okay. There was only one change. You don't have to. Though, right? What's that? There was only one change to it. There was, I believe, it was two, two little two ones. Two little on ones, three. and three she's three got them ones. marked in red. Um, that's no good for me. Sorry. Where'd the uh, colorblind. That's why. Are I you can't. really? That's why I can't see really? it. Well, they're not really. They're call-out boxes. You know what I mean? 
So. All employees shall be paid in accordance with the pay matrix approved by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. That's, That's one. I, I'm good with that one, yeah. There's I know we discussed it. Right, right. But this all looks black to me, so. So I have four yeah, they, eyes. There were oh, two yeah, changes. You have five okay, eyes? Scrolling for the second one. <laughs> so we'll take. Unanimous. We'll take it and gate, gate, gate. We'll take it and move along. Yippee! Um, okay. <laughs> so uh, the next one is I per RSA 3195. Anyone want to just do this motion? This one, Hold on, get there. Uh, yes, I move to accept and expend under RSA 31 colon 95 dash B unanticipated funds for the food pantry in the amount of $100 from James Marino. Second. All right. Seconded with thanks uh, Thank from Larry. Good. And uh, any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. I think Aye. that was unanimous. Aye. All right, so we're moving on to the mileage for the new year. Yep. So according to the IRS, beginning January 1st, 2021, the standard mileage rate for the use of a car, van, pickup, or panel truck for business miles driven is 56 cents per mile. This is a decrease of 1.5 cents from the rate for 2020. Currently, town employees are reimbursed 57.5. Uh, kindly and let me know if you choose to amend the employee rate of reimbursement effective January 1. So we can change, we cannot change, we can up, we can go down. And this is why at the last vote to increase it, I was against it. Wasn't that like a year ago? Yep. Yes. Yeah. It's funny, when I started reading it, I'm like, I remember a year ago, Lisa. Like every was, year, yeah. yep. So I would go with the IRS 56 cents per mile. So that, that would a be a motion. So I would decrease. say we should decrease it. That's what Larry said. So I'll make a motion to accept the IRS's recommendations for the standard mileage rate for use of a car van, pickup, or panel truck for 56 cents per mile. Second. Seconded by Lisa. Any discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And by the way, the Opposed. next request that comes to raise. I'm probably going to vote against. Okay, so so we had four in favor, one opposed. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> We're on to other business. So we have the okay. manifest. Anybody want to uh, have those handy? Want to do that? Yeah, we're at it. I mean, Diane, do you have it? <coughs> put it on the screen. We yeah, have them. Put I have one there if you want to start. Out. I think she's going to put it on the screen. Come on, Chucky, help out. <laughs> Keep well, listening. Passing it to me, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Diane's got it on the screen, Larry. What? If you can read it. So it's easy. So I moved to sign vendor yeah. manifest dated January 5, 2021, in the amount of $716,000, no cents, for the January Sanborn Regional School District payment. Anybody want a second? Second, second. even though they're not in, in uh, class. <laughs> um. They are in class, they're learning. Even if they're not physically in the building, they're still learning. All right, I think that covers the discussion. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Charlie, I move to. I yeah, do we I have haven't any names? At the slips. I'd rather look at the slips before I approve it. So I'm going to say no for now. You're a nay. Yeah. He's a nay for the school payment. Yeah. Okay. What slips do you want to look at? I wanted to look at all the slips. We don't get slips for the school district payment. Yeah, school district, we don't see them. Yeah, that's the only one that's go around. This is already set based on the tax rate in the approved voter appropriation of the school the budget. Oh, maybe. <laughs> so I, I There's no look. negotiation of this. There's nothing we can deduct from this. I do have the number of somebody on the school board if you want to call. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Charlie, you still in there? We did have the manifest downstairs. I looked at it the other day. Here you go. Yeah, this this month we only have the school, so. Lisa, did you make that second one? I didn't hear you. Uh, no, I wanted to make sure we had all our I's and nays. So, so are we still four to one? So we're four to one, right? One as a nay? Yep. Okay. 
And, All right, uh, so I move to sign vendor manifest dated January 5, 2021, in the amount of $143,448.60. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, so does this change your mind at all? No, I wanted to look at the slips. Okay. <laughs> so we four to one. Invoices. Lisa, yeah. the invoices. Yeah. That's now that one we actually do have invoices yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. I move to sign Cable Revolving Fund Manifest dated January 5, 2021, in the amount of $10,852.69. Second. <coughs> Second. Any discussion? Um, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed. Can we get Charlie the slips? <laughs> yeah, they're right downstairs. <laughs> Can and they're available before the meeting to come okay. in and view. Um, right. I move to sign payroll Four manifest for pay period December 20, 2020 through January 2nd, 2021, with a pay date of January 7, 2021. Second. Aye. Second. <laughs> Katie got that. Discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, okay. now I'm going to announce, not move, uh, announce that the board signed the vendor manifest dated December 29, 2020, in the amount of $51,831.35. I would also like to announce that the board signed the cable revolving fund manifest dated December 29, 2020, in the amount of $18,268.72. And my final announcement is that the board signed the payroll manifest for pay period December 6th through 19, 2020, with a pay date of December 24, 2020. Okay, and that was it on the other, right? Yep. Okay, so uh, any other? And since I'm in a motion mood, I will move to accept the selectmen's non-public and public meeting minutes dated December 15, 17, and 30, 2020. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And you do, I so heard you do all three of them, right? I have discussion. So for future reference for, for Charlie, um, when is these available for, for the selectman to look at before the meeting so he doesn't have to feel uncomfortable Are voting on something he hasn't seen? Are talking about the manifests seen? and stuff? Huh? The manifests? The manifest, the invoices and all that. I know I saw it the other day because I was at, at, with Kim at Town Hall. Yep. But, I mean, it's only fair to him that he should be able to see them before the meeting. So he doesn't she, have to. She usually does the manifest on Tuesday, the day of the meeting. So once that's done, they're on the uh, the table. But the invoices are probably here like that Monday or week before, no? Um, they could be. I guess you got to ask him. I mean, it, it was always there for the selectmen to review prior to the meeting. So right. if you come in at like 20 minutes of six instead of six, you could go down and look. I'm sure they're down there. Start doing that, Charles. I was here at 5.30. Five o'clock. I was here at 5.30 I thought they were going to be here. Yeah. So uh, any, Maybe she anybody have, have anything time, to uh, review the non-public session minutes for I unsealing? Kingston Electric. Anything? Not at this time. Uh, no. Nobody? Okay. Well, you got to see what it was for the board tonight before we wrap what? up. Anything else nope. no. before we wrap up? All right. So, again, thank you for those who uh, put together the hybrid meeting. We'll uh, look to do this going forward. Best of both worlds, I think. Um, but I will accept a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn at 9.13 p.m. Second. Seconded by Kate. Uh, that's, that's a wrap.